Allardyce Stadium on a cool and clear day in the final regular season game. The 8-7 Seattle Seahawks play the 13-2 Denver Broncos on a spectacular afternoon for football, although they expect snow a little bit later on tonight in the Denver metro area. The Broncos are the champions of the AFC West. They can capture a franchise record with the win today. And Seattle can only dream of what could have been. Happy holidays, everyone, with Sam Weich. This is Kevin Harlan. The air of invincibility, Sam, seems to have disappeared here in Denver. Well, it has. Remember, they've won 13 football games, but injuries have played a little bit of a role in this. John Elway, in particular, playing today with a hip flexor. And Mike Shanahan, 6-8 and eight in December. Part of the reason is they lose their edge a little bit because they clinch so early. Edge is what Shanahan talked about all weekend long to this team. John Elway, in fact, made a speech, an impassioned speech to this team on Wednesday. Hey, what is your read on a very disappointing Seattle 8 and 7 ball club? This is a very good football team. Dennis uh, Erickson is very frustrated over a lot of things that happened going. Of course, the keynote there is the Vinny Testaverde non touchdown, but this is a good football team. And talking to him yesterday, this team is not going to play today as if they're out of the playoffs. The Seahawks, the Broncos next on CBS. Welcome back to Mile High in Denver. The Seattle Seahawks have won the opening flip of the coin and they have elected to receive. Jason Elam will kick off. His kickoffs have been somewhat inconsistent this season. And the Seahawks have three deep back. Steve Broussard will take it from the goal line for Seattle. A block from Kerry Joseph. Another block upfield and there he goes by midfield. Deep into Denver territory, knocked out of bounds at the 44, tackled by Torrey James, a return of 56 yards, and Broussard gives great beginning field position for 26-year-old quarterback John Kitna. By way of Central Washington and the Barcelona Dragons, Dennis Erickson went and worked him out himself, said this guy just adds a spark, he's got mobility, and he is an exciting young star in the National Football League. First and 10 from the 44, the pitch out to Ricky Waters. From behind, he is pulled down by Keith Trailer and Harold Hasselbach. No gain on the play, second down and 10 upcoming. And Seattle's offense coming into today, 23rd in the NFL. Walter Jones, the left tackle with Kendall Gray, Brian Habib, the ex-Bronco, and Howard Ballard. Just saw the run by Waters. Max Strong will be the blocking back. Joey Galloway and Mike Pritchard are the wide receivers. The tight end, Christian Fourier. Second down and 10 inside the 44. Kitna throws outside. Caught by Waters and tumbles ahead after Darian Gordon makes the tackle. In a two, setting up third and eight. Denver's defense, eighth ranked in the NFL. Hasselbach, Trailer, Trevor Price, Ma'at Tanavasa. Neil Smith won't play, he's injured. Mobley, Glenn Cadrez, and Bill Romanowski, perhaps the best defensive player this year for Denver. In the secondary, Crockett, Atwater, George Coghill takes the place of Braxton, and Darian Gordon is the right corner. Third and eight from the 42. Kitna, great time in the pocket, throws a pass right through the hands of wide receiver Joey Galloway. It's incomplete, and they'll have to punt on their first possession. A rare miss for Galloway. And talking to Mike Shanahan yesterday, they were going to play Joey Galloway and John Kitna just the way they opened up. A soft zone. They were going to let them uh, try to beat a four-man rush by the Denver Broncos and play the pass. Nothing there that time. John Kitna really almost had one intercepted with that rifle shot. Finesse punter Jeff Fiegels will send this deep. Coghill is back. It'll land inside the 10. Bounce at the 5. And is off the fingertips of Fred Thomas on a 42-yard punt. Fiegels just about had him stranded at the 1. Jason Kyle was there as well, 57. Fred Thomas, Jason Kyle. This is what happens when your season is seem to be snake bed. Look at them looking at each other. Who's going to get it? You don't make a fair catch call there. Nobody says, I got it like you do a... A pop fly in baseball. It's the first guy there. John Elway, ninth Pro Bowl. Didn't have a good ball game last week against the Miami Dolphins. He'll have to play better. Actually, he rated it just a, a little better than a 26 rating, which is very, very low. 
but he's played his best football against the Seattle Seahawks, has had 40 touchdown passes. From the 20-yard line, first down and 10. Good block on the far side. Ball is loose. It came out of the hands of Elway. Incomplete pass. Setting up in the pocket, and it may have just slipped right out of the grasp of 37-year-old John Elway. Well, the arm was going forward. That's all that counts. It doesn't matter how far the ball goes, but he tries to pull this one back. Once you cock your arm and you start forward with it, that grip starts to loosen as you start to release the spiral. You see, he starts, realizes there's nothing going to be happening downfield, tries to pull it back, and it doesn't happen. Second down and 10. Griffith in motion. Elway with time. Throws a pass. Patted down at the line of scrimmage. Adams may have gotten the way. Although Michael Sinclair was there as well. The Broncos on offense, number one in the NFL. Tony Jones, a Pro Bowler for the first time after 11 NFL seasons. Schlereth, Nalen in the Pro Bowl. Neal and Harry Swain. Davis going for 2,000 today. Needs 170 yards. Griffith the blocking back. A couple thousand yard wide receivers in Smith and McCaffrey. And the all pro tight end is Shannon Sharp. Third down and 10 from the 20. Elway from the shotgun, given great time, great block by Jones. Elway fires, and he's got a receiver. A flag is down. The catch is made by Smith on a back pedal at the Seattle 44 as it stands now, a gain of 36 yards. Seattle learned one thing. They're not getting there with a four-man rush. I bet you he was holding that ball six, seven, maybe eight seconds. Holding 20 defense. Penalty is declined. First down. Jay Bellamy didn't have much of a choice but to hold on to it. Listen, look at how long. You see the offensive lineman, a double team right there, solid on that side. Elway moves to get good vision down the field, and then breaking loose at the last minute. Jay Bellamy can't hold on forever. Rod Smith with a big game. Smith with his 78th reception of the season. He is the sixth rated wide receiver in the NFL. The pitch out to Davis. A block by Griffith, and he gets a couple down near the 43, tackled by rookie linebacker Deshaun Miles. Last time these two teams played, Terrell Davis had uh, 208 yards rushing. So this is one of his, uh, one of the teams he's played well against. He needs 170 yards today to break the 2,000-yard mark. He needs 17 yards today to take over the lead in rushing in the NFL. And he's got a bad back and bad ribs. Second down and nine. Davis cuts outside. Got a McCaffrey block and he's to the 35. Tackled by Jay Bellamy. The Seattle defense today 25th in the NFL coming in. A line of Michael Sinclair coming into today tied for the sack lead in the league with Adams, Cortez Kennedy, great tackles, and Philip Daniels outside. Anthony Simmons, a rookie first-round pick. Deshaun Miles, a fourth-round pick and a rookie. And the great Chad Brown, bound for Honolulu in February. Springs, Williams, Bellamy, and Willie Williams. Sean Springs in his second year. He'll also be a pro bowler in Honolulu in early February. Third and one. And a big hole and a mammoth run to the 25 by Terrell Davis. He gains nine and picks up a first down for Denver. So Davis gains nine on Denver's first possession today after Seattle punts. And now with 18 yards on the ground and at the 26 yard line of Seattle, it's Denver first and 10 in a scoreless first quarter. And he goes past Jamal Anderson for the league lead in rushing. Terrell Davis wins it in 1998. Fake handoff, play action, good block by Swain, good block by Jones. There goes Elway with time, chased by Sinclair, and down he goes. Sacked at the 37, Michael Sinclair along with Philip Daniels cave in on him. Last week against Miami, John Elway playing with a groin pull and a little bit of a hip flexor, which is basically the same thing, had a little trouble going to his right. This time he flushes to the right. Protection is holding up. Coverage, you know, you hear about coverage sacks. Really, coverage sacks are more quarterbacks giving into the sack rather than throw it away. But that time he didn't see everybody coming from all the angles. He's looking downfield, got that grip on the ball like all great quarterbacks do, so he can throw the ball late. And then out of nowhere, there's Mike Sinclair. For Sinclair, his 17th sack, a career high, and John Elway will burn a timeout with second and 22 staring at him. 
with about five minutes gone here in the first quarter from mile high. The Broncos have lost two consecutive games. They're looking for a win to end the regular year. All right, Captain, we're gonna have a coin toss now. If there's a team, we'll call it in the air. Um, we want a good, clean game. Um, we're all professionals here. Does anyone have change for a dollar? What? Wanna get away? Southwest has your ticket to freedom. For only $99 or less, you can fly coast to coast when you purchase by January 19th and travel January 5th through June 3rd. You are now free to move about the country. No, we don't have that. When Tom Stenberg discovered he couldn't find a ribbon. No, no, we don't have that. For his home printer. Printer? He opened his own store, then another, and another, and changed the way office products are sold. Being ever alert to customer needs, Staples has set company sales records every year it's been in business. Where do you learn about companies that are creating entire new industries? Exactly. NASDAQ Amex, the market of markets. Hi, I'm Doug Flutie, pro football player and father of an autistic child. A lot of people buy Flutie Flakes because a portion of the proceeds go to help autistic children. But there's another way you can help. Dial 1010-220 when you call long distance. You can talk up to 20 minutes for only 99 cents. And every time you use it, a donation will be made to the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation. So dial 1010-220, talk up to 20 minutes for only 99 cents, and help some great kids at the same time. It's a win-win situation. I wish football was this easy. Catch martial arts superstar Sammo Hung in the number one new drama. You failed your drop this test. You have beautiful eyes. Are you trying to butter me up? Martial Law, CBS Saturday. Kevin Harlan, Sam White, back at Mile High Stadium in Denver. The numbers on Terrell Davis. Second down and 22 after the sack by Seattle. Back to the Seattle 39. Four wide receivers deployed by Elway. With time, swings a pass to the near side, caught by Rod Smith. He dances on the side, working on Terry McDaniel. He's to the 23, picking up 16 on second and 22. And that's the fire zone that we're seeing so much about. You see these rushers, and then here's a lineman's going to drop back into coverage. What it does, though, is those linemen can't get into the deep outside zone, so it left that throwing lane open for Rod Smith. A quarterback like John Elway that can move, though, is not as bothered by that fire zone as much as a quarterback that stands straight in that pocket. Protection holds up. Now third and eight for Elway inside the 24. Rolling from the pocket. Chased on the blitz by Williams. He throws it as he is spun. It's an incomplete pass. He may have been outside the pocket, and the pocket is defined from tight end to tight end, and a late flag has been thrown at the 42. Now that's a strange late flag because the referee initially ruled that he was outside the tight end to tight end zone where he can throw the ball away. It's a safety feature that's put in by the league to protect quarterbacks, in particular quarterbacks like John Elway. And now it looks like they've cleared it up. Bernie Kukon. Quarterback was out of the pocket. Did not get the line of scrimmage. However, there was a receiver there. No penalty. And what he's talking about is the ball has to, if he's out of the pocket, he can throw it and just throw one away. But it has to get at least to or beyond the line of scrimmage, unless, of course, there's somebody in the area that he's throwing to behind the line of scrimmage. So he goes behind it. Now, here comes the chase. As he throws the ball, he's got to get it to the line of scrimmage, unless there's a ball. There it is right there. You see, coming back hard, looking for uh, a, a reception, Ed McCaffrey hoping that he could get to it. Jason Elam on fourth down will try a 42-yard field goal. Tom Ruin, the punter, will hold. Elam has kicked a 63-yarder this year, and this one is no good. He had missed just two all season long coming into today, including last Monday night in Miami. A rare miss by Elam. We're still scoreless in Denver. In the financial world, banking as we have known it has become a thing of the past. Brokerages, insurance companies, all of our financial institutions are in transition. Teller windows have become electronic gateways. The savings book is now the investment portfolio. 
and financial products which once could only be obtained from a vast number of different sources can now be obtained from one. Stocks, bonds, mutual funds, planning, insurance, all have moved to a single place, to the financial mountain called First Union, who for half a century has helped investors seeking diversity, growth, and security. Come to the mountain called First Union, or if you prefer, the mountain will come to you. The North Star system, performance and technology that set Cadillac apart from every other luxury car in the world. Now for a limited time during the Cadillac Performance Drive, a 1999 Seville with the North Star system can be yours for just $5.49 a month and just $14.99 due at lease signing. Seville for just $5.49 a month, a powerful way to set yourself apart during the Cadillac Performance Drive. See your Cadillac dealer today. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. First Union, your guide to the financial world. And by Cadillac and your Cadillac dealers. And yes, the Buffalo Bills did win today after beginning the season 0-3. We'll give you the playoff picture in just a second. Seattle's second possession from the 33. Play action by Kitna. Fires a pass, which is caught by Joey Galloway, the elusive wide receiver out of Ohio State, close to a first down with about nine and a half on that gain. Tackled by middle linebacker Glenn Cadrez. Joey Galloway is just going to come in against the zone defense, and he's going to turn in and find that hole right there. You see the zone inside and outside, but nobody in the throwing lane. When you talk about a zone defense, the guys that take that away are the linebackers. The defensive backs are the last line of defense. The guys that try to get in between the throw are the linebackers. And if a good receiver like Joey Galloway can sense that, he can slide into the open throwing lane. Galloway's 63rd reception on the season. 1,000-yard receiver, an alternate for the Pro Bowl as you see the measurement. And he is about to two links shy of the first down. You know, talking to Joey Galloway last night, he said, nobody can cover me man for man, especially bump and run. I'm going to beat them. You're going to see more zone against me where they can get help inside and out. He's right. And we saw that on 70 and 57-yard touchdown passes against the Jets and All-Pro Aaron Glenn a couple weeks ago. And going up against an All-Pro, it wasn't just going up against somebody that uh, he could outrun. And also the throw was perfectly uh, placed by John Kitna. Kitna, remember, is playing really as a starter in his first year. Four and one as a starter coming into this ball game. Galloway, by the way, is right with Steve Largent in terms of receptions this far into his career. Inches to go on second down, and with ease they get it. Max Strong pile drives his way up for the first down and gains about five on the play. The playoff picture of the AFC. Well, it gets a little bit clearer now because of the games that were played earlier today. New England, the number six seed, plays Jacksonville, number three at Jacksonville, and Buffalo will be at Miami even though Miami lost today. And then, of course, uh, the winners go on from there. The teams drawing the bye, the New York Jets and Denver with the two best records in the AFC. The game, this uh, complicated formula is cleared up fast today. Trevor Price injury and a timeout. The North Star system, performance and technology that set Cadillac apart from every other luxury car in the world. Now, for a limited time during the Cadillac Performance Drive, a 1999 DeVille with the North Star system can be yours for just $4.99 a month and just $9.99 due at lease signing. DeVille for just $4.99 a month, a powerful way to set yourself apart during the Cadillac Performance Drive. See your Cadillac dealer today. Dan, you look good. Lost weight? Cut the act, Phil. I need to tell management what's happening with our website. Okay. In terms they can understand. Every buck we spend will earn two bucks back by the end of the year.
Friday. Buckle up for a wild ride. I don't think he meant to do that. Start off the new year with Nash Bridges CBS Friday. Back at Mile High in Denver and Trevor Price walked off under his own power. He's okay. He'll come back in. He's got to miss a play because they took the injury timeout. That's seven and a half sacks this year. One of the they, they come with four guys up front. He's one of the important ones. John Kitna first down and 10 from the 48 in a scoreless first quarter and Harold Hasselbeck the left end looked like he may have been a little bit antsy on the left side. They threw all the start 75 offense. Five yard penalty still first. He was induced. Induced by Howard House Ballard. They call him uh, House mainly because he's built like one. But you can't flinch. Once you go to your three point stance, once your hand touches that ground, you can't move or simulate the snap count. And even if you're in a two point stance, in other words, you just on your knee, hands on your knees, you can't lean back. That's what happened. Ricky Waters, a running back, will be a wide receiver at the bottom of your screen on first and 15. A pass bobbled incomplete to Galloway. They've gone to him a couple times and he's dropped both. We talked to John Kittner last night and tried to evaluate himself. He said, you know what he's doing right. He's recognizing mismatches. He's got mobility. He throws the short routes beautifully. And of course, he's learning to understand defensive concepts. I can tell you as a former coach, if you don't understand your opponent, you haven't got much of a chance just by memorizing the offense. He probably is the lowest paid starting quarterback in the NFL. We'll talk about these. Second down, 15. Kitten, a good block from the center. Gray down the middle. He throws caught by Ricky Waters. He's to the Bronco 46. He picks up 11 yards as you see other games. St. Louis and San Francisco. New York Jets winning big today over New England. Vinny Testaverde is making a very big statement about being the league MVP. He has been sensational. Well, I tell you, he has played as well, certainly as well as any quarterback in the National Football League. That includes the Randall Cunninghams, the John Elways, and Dan Marino, the Steve Youngs. He has put himself right there in the upper echelon. Yeah, Steve Young is having a career year. Third and a long four. A block by Jones buys the quarterback Kitten a time, and his pass is caught by tight end Christian Fourier. A gain of 13 to the 33 of Denver. And a first down, he beat outside linebacker John Mobley. See John Kitten with that little smile right there. That's, that charisma is important. He holds the ball. He's going to his second receiver. He's coming right here, covered one-on-one by John Mobley. But Christian Fourier kept working to the inside, knowing that the quarterback was going to find him sooner or later. That's confidence in your passing game. It is a first down for Seattle at the 34 of Denver. Scoreless in the first quarter. Drop play handoff to Waters, coming off a career day last week. Tackled by Harold Hasselbeck. 178 yards on the ground against the Colts. The best day in the great career of Ricky Waters. That time it was Mike Lodi slowing him down before Harold Hasselbeck did it. But Kitten also told us there were some things he needed to do better. He's got to work on his play action. These are him evaluating himself, his deep ball accuracy, inside screens. He's had a little trouble there. And his out routes, which are pure timing throws. You just have to throw them over and over. On the quarterback out of NAIA Central Washington on second down and 12. Deep drop, hit by Tanavasa, gets the pass away, and it's caught by a spinning waters at the 26. A gain of nine. Again, he works on John Mobley, the linebacker. Kevin, I'll tell you what, this quarterback does not look like a first-year player. Now, he remember, he played over in the World League in uh, NFL Europe for the Barcelona Dragons. Teams are understanding that there's a, a tremendous value in that in terms of the experience. He's been on the cab squad or the taxi squad. He's watched Warren, uh, the, the likes of Warren Moon and John Freeze. So he's been learning all along. But boy, has he remembered everything. And he's four and one as a starter. On the 27th, third and three. Kidna sprinting out of the pocket. Running for a first down as he goes head over heels to the 21. Tackled by Crockett. Kidna with the first down romp as he gains five. Now this is what I like about a young quarterback. Watch the hand on the ball. See the grip? He's got his eyes downfield. The ball, though, is in a grip. Now right at the last there, that's Ray Crockett hitting him. Ray Crockett, a very physical corner. John Kidna willing to take him on one-on-one. Crockett weighs 184 pounds. Kitna, though, by not sliding, he gets every inch of that run. And he's home grown. He's from Tacoma. First and ten, ninth play with an empty backfield from the 21. 
Hitting a quick hitter. It's caught by Pritchard on a dive at the 11. Close to a first down. This is this is really amazing that a young quarterback can read this quickly. Ray Crockett comes from his right side just out of nowhere. They brought six people that time, the four defensive linemen, a linebacker, and Ray Crockett, and he threw in the direction of the blitz. Now, the blitz is going to come from right here. You'll see him enter the screen. There he comes, and he throws right back in that direction. Well, you know if you blitz him that side, there can't be anybody left underneath. That's where you get your one-on-one -on -one matchup. He's five and six on this drive. Second down and one. Pritchard on the move from the 11. Hand off to Waters. Up the middle he goes inside the 10 and probably acquires the first down. You know what we're seeing right here, Kevin, is what we heard uh, Michael Sinclair tell us last night, that these guys were going to come out here and play football as if they were in the playoffs. Had the Vinny Testaverde touchdown score counted for them, they would be playing for a 10 game for their 10th win here today. And a victory, uh, depending on the playoff matchups and so forth, going to put him in the playoffs. They've had a tough year, but this football team, believe me, is going to play this one all four quarters. Great numbers put up by Kitna. First and goal inside the Bronco 10. Hand off to Waters. Lead block by Strong, and Waters is down to the four. It's a gain of six and tackled by hard-hitting Steve Atwater. Steve Atwater been around a long time playing in his eighth Pro Bowl this year. The motion is supposed to pull somebody out of the middle. It doesn't happen. They still leave eight in the box. Just finding a hole through up through the middle. Ricky Waters, though, the last guy that he's going to find is Steve Atwater at 220 pounds can hit just like a linebacker. Upcoming the 12th play of the Seattle Drive. Second down, goal at the four. And off to Waters, a block by Strong. Outside he goes, Waters, times, touchdown! <laughs> what a drive. And this is something, this is a, good, and a tough place to have a drive this long. Right here at the very end, Romanowski, see, it looked like he may have been held a little bit right there, but Romanowski was the last guy. Christian Foray, he got just enough of a block on him to hold him, and then the bounce outside by Ricky Waters right here. He stumbles a little bit, reaching into the end zone, though, to make sure that ball crosses the plane. That's all you need. Todd Peterson, the extra point. It is up and in, and Seattle scores first against the defending Super Bowl champion Denver Broncos. Broncos have won 23 consecutive home games, but it's Seattle early here at Mile High. For great advice about digital technology, head for Circuit City. If you're looking for a DVD player, make sure you choose one with DivX. Only DVD players with DivX play both DVD and DivX movie discs. DivX lets you watch movies at home for about what it costs to rent, but you never have to return movies or pay late fees. This RCA DVD player with DivX is only $399.99 and get any five DivX movies free after rebate. Plug into DivX at Circuit City. Assumes a comfortable position. Relaxation is achieved through extreme focus. Commence relaxation now. Germans don't do laid back. Shadow beer. Backs. The best of what Germans do best. Now there's important news about relieving the aches and fever from the flu. In new guidelines, what pain reliever do flu experts prefer the most? The one you've trusted all along. The medicine in extra strength Tylenol. Tylenol, the first choice for flu relief. NFL on CBS is sponsored by Circuit City. Low prices all over the store. And by Bex, the best of what Germans do best. Kevin Harlan, Sam White, four-yard touchdown run by Ricky Waters. 7-0 Seattle on a 12-play drive. Well, we talked to the Seattle Seahawks last night, and we certainly got the feeling that this team was ready to play. This is not a typical last game of the regular season. The ensuing kickoff by Todd Peterson. Hebron was back, and he'll get it at the 14-yard line. A lead block by Lavelle. 
And Kerry Joseph makes the tackle on Hebron, who returned one last week, 95 yards against the Miami Dolphins. A 22-yard return by number 22. Vaughn Hebron, timeout at mile high. For one week only, Zales is having an after Christmas clearance sale where you can get up to 70% off on a great selection of jewelry throughout the store. And get what you really want for up to 70% off. Now through Saturday at Zales. This is a message for Brian Hegarty, card member since 91. One reason to use your American mm. Express card this holiday season oh. 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 is that just about any gift you buy is insured. Aye. Yet another reason to do more with the American Express card. There are at least a hundred questions every home buyer should ask. Like, how much down payment do I need? Can I buy a $200,000 home with an FHA loan? Do I really need homeowner's insurance? Luckily, HUD's FHA has the answers. We've helped 25 million Americans buy a home. Call for our free brochure. Now that the money has the new advanced battery, it's a whole new ball game. We have to be prepared for just about anything. Take that right, boys. New Energizer Advanced Formula. No battery lasts longer. He's a doctor with attitude. Mrs. Zellman's in one. How's she doing today? She remembered her teeth. Thank God for that. Otherwise, it's like talking to a sock puppet. Becker, CBS Monday. A Ricky Waters touchdown run. Here comes the second possession for Denver. They missed a field goal from 42 yards away the first time they had it. From the 35. Terrell Davis needing 152 more for 2,000. Davis, that's a nice block from tight end Dwayne Carswell, and is tackled eventually by Anthony Simmons and a gain of seven. Busy day in the NFL. Right now, let's go to CBS in New York and Jim Nance. Kevin and Sam, Arizona needs to win to get into the playoffs. And Adrian Morrell, they say he crossed the plane. Touchdown, Cardinals first quarter, and let's go back to Denver. The ex Jet Morrell. Having a big year, over 1,000 yards himself. That running game paired with Jake Plummer has put Arizona's offense right up there. Second down three from the 42. Davis spins under the grass for Springs and continues to move up to the 50-yard line. He picks up a first down, a gain of eight. Bellamy with the stop. What a run. Oh, boy, is this fun to watch right here. Needs 170 when he came into this ball game. Now less than 150. Spins, fights his way through. The offensive line gets him started, but he makes most of that on himself. Let me tell you, when you enter a game like this and you know one of your running backs needs X number of yards, the entire offensive line bonds together. They want that running record for them as much as they do for the running back. He's got 33 yards now from the 51st and 10. Davis again. Davis breaking tackles. Davis inside the 30. 21-yard gain. Terrell Davis is playing with a sore ribs and a little bit of a sore back right here. You can see the good solid block. Everybody just stays on their blocks, giving him a chance to get out into the open field. Even wide receivers blocking down the field. That was Rod Smith way down the field that time. You know, a year ago this time, it was Barry Sanders. He needed 131 yards against the New York Jets in the last week. He ripped off 184 to break 2,000. And that's what the goal is, of course, here for Terrell Davis. And the Denver offense. From the 29, first and 10 L had the ball batted, deflected, and incomplete at the 30-yard line. That's the second batted ball by the Seattle defensive line on an Elway throw today. Well, one thing John Elway does, as great a player as he is, is the ball, when his motion starts, the ball goes down and then up. Now watch his arm motion. Just watch right here. Watch the ball go down and see the arm goes down and then up as opposed to coming straight up. Well, if you can study him long enough, and watch when the ball starts to go down. See it go down before it goes up? That's when you time your jump. Every quarterback has some little signal that he sends, and that's John's. Cortez Kennedy got that one, second down and 10. And off to Davis, cuts outside. Got a block from Joe, so a first down. And a flag is down at the 28. 
looked like to me that this is Tony Jones on Philip Daniels. And they're going to bring it back, so we know it's a holding against somebody. Tony Jones, the left tackle against Philip Daniels. Defensive holding. Man. 77 offense. 10 yard penalty. Still second down. We just saw Arizona score their opening touchdown here. This is what the NFC playoff picture looks like. Arizona or Tampa Bay. Now, if Arizona loses and the New York Giants win, Tampa Bay would go to the playoffs against Dallas. Green Bay, San Francisco. That one's a little bit convoluted. Got to find out what happens later today to see who plays there. But we'll play at Dallas or at Green Bay or at San Francisco, depending on the wins and losses. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Seattle 7-0 over Denver. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Some people buy cut-rate car insurance, figuring they'll probably never have a claim. But then, something goes wrong, and there's no State Farm agent to turn to for help. So, the choice is yours. Go with a State Farm agent who will be there for you, or go it alone. It took weeks, but you finally found that new car you've been looking for. Now all you've got to do is keep it away from people like this. This holiday season, give the auto theft protection you, your family, and your friends deserve. The Club Vehicle Anti-Theft Device. Because tis the season of giving, not taking. The Club. The only anti-theft device recommended by police. Sleigh bells ring. Are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening. Through the wasteland of winter, the cold wind moans. But the will to win can warm old bones. Kevin Harlan, Sam White, Mile High Stadium. It's rare to see a zero by the Denver Broncos after one quarter. Well, the Broncos are the best in the National Football League. They scored 144 first quarter points. Nobody's done as well. But the Seattle Seahawks have come to play today. We begin the second quarter with the second down and 20 from the Seattle 39. Elway in the shotgun, blitzes on, good block by Jones, buys Elway time, throws a pass, broken tackle by Davis. He fumbles the ball and it's loose and recovered by Seattle. And rookie Deshaun Miles. The first turnover of the game, Seattle's defense stops the Denver roll and Seattle's got it back. Now he's good, Terrell Davis is going to slip out into the flat right here. He's a secondary receiver, the zone defense stops him. On the run, he loses the ball. Time out. Woo! I actually got in. You broke into personnel. Yeah, these are salaries of every person in the company. Look, this senior VP makes about half as much as this senior VP. I bet he doesn't know that. Sure he does. I just emailed everybody in the company. The amazing power of Duracell Ultra. Mike's towing, please hold. Oh. Cell phones get up to 100 more minutes of talk time. Duracell Ultra, with a concentrated power force to give more life to your high-tech devices. Mike's towing, can I help you? Hey, could you put me back on hold? Duracell Ultra, more power, more life. 
A plane that can't land. Oh my god. A pilot that won't quit. They're my passengers, and I am not going to let them die. Final descent to CBS tonight. Sam, the expectation was that Dennis Erickson had to make the playoffs in order to keep his job. They were knocked out last week, so speculation has started to pick up again. Well, one thing's sure that football team will play for this guy. They've won three of their last four. Only the Jet lost in the last four games. So after the Terrell Davis fumble, Kitten on first and ten, winds up, guns a pass, which is caught by Pritchard. He breaks a tackle and curls a field to the 44-yard line, tackled by Romanowski. It's a gain of 19. You know, the Seattle Dennis Erickson this season, it's a what if against the Pittsburgh Steelers. If that catch is made, they beat the Pittsburgh Steelers, add one victory to their game. Against the Oakland Raiders, they had multiple turnovers, four or five of them, just like this. If they play injury, uh, without those, that's two wins. And of course, the downpour in Kansas City takes away everybody's game plan. There, and of course, the Vinny Testaverde uh, play a few weeks ago in New York. There's three or four football games they could add to the win column. There was a fumble on the snap. Kitna went to a knee, picked it up. It'll be second down. I think the point here is that Dennis Erickson has his team playing, and he's got players that are playing for him. That's always a sign of respect for the coach. It should be noted team president Bob Whitson has never publicly said the team had to make the playoffs for the coaches to keep their jobs. No, it's been speculated, and that's just about it. Shotgun spread formation, second down and ten. Right time for Kitna. Look at the time he's got to throw. And fires it incomplete. Again, he goes for Galloway. Again, the pass is dropped. Third drop today by Galloway. Gordon was covering. Now, this very year to see two rushers. That's all they're going to have. The Denver Broncos drop everybody out. But here you see it. One, two rushers coming in. That's why Kitten has all this time. Look at all the blue shirts covering the downfield. Finally, he just has to rifle one in there and can't, and the, uh, the police is not there. But I don't think you'll see Denver do that too much. That's a change-up defense. That's two against five. Remember, those five offensive linemen aren't going anywhere. That makes a difference. Third down and 10 from the 43. Kitten again with loads of time. There's a good block by Jones. That ball batted down by Keith Traylor. The ex-Green Bay Packer in Kansas City Chief. And so Seattle can't cash in on the Denver fumble, and they'll have to punt for a second time. Now this time they bring four, and look at the protection. John Kitna has as much time as the snap before when they only brought two. Trailer, though, spinning around as he sees the scramble by Kitna, knocks that one down and saves the completion. They hit somebody open up field. Feagles to punt for a second time. George Coghill is deep back. And the catch at the 12 and out of bounds near the 15. First out of bounds by reserve fullback Reggie Brown. Good punt, good punt coverage. The ball's in the air long enough and plenty of people around it. Ricky Waters with a touchdown run. The Seahawks by seven. Plane tickets to the town where she was born, $1,200. Train to the house where she grew up, $63. Pints at the pub where she met your dad, $8. Finally understanding where your mother was coming from, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's Platinum MasterCard. Accepted all over, even pubs in Ireland. So what's the story with Tom? What? I heard he was crying like a baby because Monday Night Football's almost over. You dumb mook. He wasn't crying. He was checking out the CBS Monday comedies and laughing so hard he had tears in his eyes. He was laughing? Boy, like a freaking hyena. Cosby, King of Queens, Raymond, Becker, forget about it. So he was laughing, huh? He, you should have seen him. He had Chianti shooting out of his nose. Chianti? That's funny. <laughs> The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Volkswagen.
On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. And by MasterCard, there are some things in life money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. The foothills outside Denver with Sam White, Kevin Harlan from the 15, first and 10. And off goes to Davis, good block by Jones. Davis gets another block from Smith, and he's up to the 30-yard line. A hard-earned 15. Bellamy and Williams make the stop. Tony Jones and Mark Slareth on the left side. The ball's going to start out to the right. I see him coming. He's going to bend back to the left. Solid block. See, everybody stay on their blocks. Nobody blocks for a count and a half and then lets up. Way downfield. You see right there, that's Rod Smith, the wide receiver. All he does is practice catching the balls and go game time, then he goes and blocks people. Shanahan told us he thought the offense could rally around Terrell Davis today. First and ten. Wonderful time for Elway. Now moves up, throws across the middle. Incomplete flag thrown, 45-yard line. Shannon Sharp and Bellamy were in the vicinity battle. They're going to call it against Bellamy. At least Bellamy thinks they're going to call it against him. And Jay Bellamy pleading his case. Very physical Holding football player. 20 defense, five yard penalty automatic first down. You see what you get into here. Shannon Sharp is the guy that Bellamy was called for holding. Shannon Sharp is one of those guys that won't let you forget it. Next time you go, he runs around, and Bellamy's on him one-on-one. He's a strong safety. He's going to remind him of that hold. And then you start getting the defensive player, Bellamy in this case, to maybe forget his game plan a little bit. And Bellamy has just been tagged with his second penalty today. Hand off to Davis. Elway threw a block on the weak side. It's a gain of two. Well, I'll tell you what, John Elway. <laughs> 38 years old. He's going to make the handoff. Now, just watch John Elway, number seven. He makes the handoff. See him come back from Bellamy right here? And he actually throws the block. He's not just standing there daring the guy to come on down the field. He initiates the block. I think they want to win number 14 today. This is an offense, though, Sam White, which has scored just two touchdowns in two games. Well, they clearly, the last few weeks, have fallen off their pace. They were averaging 33 points a game until the last two weeks. Second down and eight. Here comes Sinclair. Elway gets it away. Caught by tight end Shannon Sharp. He is the leading receiving tight end in terms of yards and receptions through the 90s. He'll be close to a first down. The Jets win. Tampa Bay demolishing Cincinnati. As you see, scores from New York and Baltimore. It's a win of what might be the last game for Ted Marchabrota. Yeah, Ted's done a good job there, and he's leaving a good football team for somebody else if it is his last game. We don't want to speculate on a change because they before they happen, but there's a lot of conversation around the league about several coaches uh, are being changed this year, probably as many as five, maybe six or seven. The short pass, good for a first down. McCaffrey in motion, big handoff to LaBelle. Great time for Elway. Great block thrown by Neal. The pass caught by McCaffrey to the Seattle 33. Tackled by Williams again at 22. And McCaffrey had to dance to get three, but Elway had the time to find him. Here's McCaffrey. He's going to go up against Sean Springs, number 24. Now, John Elway should have thrown the ball by now. Sean Springs is saying it's got to be over now. As he turns around, though, Ed McCaffrey has done the old scramble drill. They practice this one, you can bet, hundreds of times. When time passes and you're on the sideline, run right back down the sideline. And McCaffrey going to his first Pro Bowl. He's had a big year. First down at the 33. Elway right to work on first down. Got a block, going long. He's got a receiver. Smith, touchdown. Coming from here, that's Jay Bellamy. So he knows he's got man on man on the backside. Willie Williams one on one. Just flat gets beat. Beautiful catch over the top. Let me tell you, that's a tough catch because you lose sight of the ball just as the ball arrives because of the helmet coming back over your forehead. Willie Williams was beaten twice last week by Peyton Manning and the Colts in the Kingdom. Dealing with the extra try. We're in the hole and we are tied in mile high. Look at their outreach, the hands, all hands catch. 
and never loses stride. 33 yard touchdown pass by Elway. Send your customers two-day holiday packages with FedEx and we'll deliver, even on Saturdays, for an extra $10. Send your customers two- to three-day holiday packages with Priority Mail and we'll deliver, even on Saturdays, at no extra charge. Send your customers two-day holiday packages with UPS and we'll deliver, but not on Saturdays. Sorry. So, what's your priority? These days, everything's faster. So how come pain relief isn't faster? Introducing Advil Liquid Gels. On tough pain, they're stronger and faster than extra strength Tylenol. New Advil Liquid Gels. Pain relief just got faster. This Super Bowl Sunday, 31. the prize patrol could surprise you with $31 million. The one and only Pusher's Clearinghouse Sweepstakes. Now, bigger than ever. Cool. I'm Neil Smith of the Denver Broncos. Here in Denver, we're proud to be a part of the NFL United Way team. The NFL, the United Way, and you, the power of teamwork. The Great American Race, the Daytona 500, only on CBS Sports. Elway throws his 19th touchdown pass. That's warmed the fans here at Sold Out Mile High for the 229th consecutive game. Ron Smith, a 33-yard touchdown pass. Elway perfect on the drive, three of three. And a subsequent kickoff by Elam, retrieved at the goal line by Broussard, who returned to kickoff earlier today for 56 yards, breaking tackles, and he's up to the 33. He's exciting. One of the best in the business, Steve Broussard. Tackle made by linebacker Keith Burns. Coming up in the NASDAQ Amex halftime report, Jim Nance, Marcus Allen, Brent Jones, Mike Lombardi, with the scores and highlights and playoff updates up today, that's all coming up next on the NASDAQ Amex Halftime Report. Now young John Kidna tied at seven. Now we get a chance to see him respond in a tough place to play. The crowd is going to be loud now. On the 35, the pitch out goes to Waters. A lead block by Strong. He tries to cut the corner, and Ricky Waters does. And he picks up three. He's over 1,000 yards on the season. He's done it with three different teams, an NFL record. John Kitna comes in today, like we said before, as one of the lowest paid starting quarterbacks in the league. Well, he's playing this year for $196,000. He, the exclusive rights to John Kitna belong to the Seattle Seahawks, which means that next year they only have to pay him $375,000. Obviously, they're not going to do that. They're negotiating. They don't want this guy out on the free agent market anytime soon, especially with the Cleveland Browns coming to town. Good point. Second down and seven. The pitch out to Waters. Shooting through. Ray Crockett with a great tackle. Ray Crockett. And there, how about this? Here's a defensive back that has 11 and a half career sacks. He's going to come right up and just seal it right there. His job is contained. He's supposed to make sure that if the ball comes his way, he forces everything back inside or make the tackle. He chose the latter option that time. When the Broncos won the Super Bowl last year, he was a free agent. He was a priority to be signed by this team. It's third and ten, and the noise building at mile high from the 35. Kitna with time, throws a pass. It's caught by Galloway, but short of a first down by three yards. He's to the 41, had to get near the 45, and they got a punt again. And the Denver Broncos came with that two-man rush again. It's just Alfred Williams and Harold Hasselback are the only two rushers. They drop everybody out, and it works for them two for two. You know, you, as a quarterback, you're used to seeing X number of players in, de, in defending the pass. And when you see all of them back there, 9 out of 11, hard to find somebody open. Fiegels sends up a rocket, which will be fair caught by the backpedaling Coghill at the 11. 48-yard punt. Fiegels again with a nice boot. 
John Kitna wears number seven because he grew up admiring John Elway. He's now tied with him. Adamstown, Pennsylvania, a true story. At a flea market, a man bought a frame for four dollars. When he brought it home, he made a two million dollar discovery, an original copy of the Declaration of Independence. When it comes to retirement, you can depend on luck or you can depend on us, Sun America. Ask about our personal retirement portfolios and don't leave your future to chance. Sun America, the retirement specialist. Champagne's not Corbell. Uh-oh, gotta go. Corbell, official champagne of the Millennium Celebration. Now there's important news about relieving the aches and fever from the flu. In new guidelines, what pain reliever do flu experts prefer the most? The one you've trusted all along. The medicine in extra strength Tylenol. Tylenol, the first choice for flu relief. If you're a hospital corporation and you're cooking the books to put one over on Medicare, he is the last guy you want looking over your shoulder. 60 Minutes, tonight. The men of the Turk family have been protecting the people of Chicago for three generations. They're cops first. This is not a job for heroes, Joey. Family always. William Devane stars. The mother's already given up on the rest of us, but you're her great hope, so don't break her heart, son. Turks, coming Thursday, January 21st to CBS. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Sun America, the retirement specialist, and by Cobell, the official champagne of the Millennium Celebration. We're back in Denver. Kevin Harlan alongside Sam White. Mile High Stadium sold out. We're tied at seven. It's already been a history-making day for the great running back Terrell Davis. Well, he's had a terrific year, and of course, today he just puts him in the number one lead for this year in rushing, but also puts him in some pretty good company there. Eric Dickerson, Sanders, Simpson, Campbell. Earl Campbell didn't gain the 2,000, but he certainly had a great year then. But Terrell Davis has a real shot at it here because John Elway and company is going to feed him the ball in that offensive line. You can bet on him to get it. First and 10 handoff from the 11 yard line. It goes to Terrell Davis. He picks up uh, about two yards. Bringing up second down and eight. You know, it's interesting to watch an offensive line. Before the game, they come out before the game about an hour and a half, two hours before, and they call it grazing. They just walk around, they kick the dirt, they look around, they start to put their thoughts together. It's a unit within a unit. They've got to make all those calls, and when they've got something at stake like Terrell Davis's record right here, they play for it. Second down, eight outside it goes, Rod Smith. He fought for the first down, he's got the first down. Working on Willie Williams, a gain of 10. The AFC. The uh, playoff seeds here, Denver, of course, number one. The New York Jets, who are, believe me, they're chasing the Denver Broncos right now, playing their best football of the year. Jacksonville, of course, is having all kinds of trouble with injuries in Miami, Buffalo, New England, will be the wild card seeds. First and ten. Davis again. Slithers for a gain of five. Next Sunday, playoff action begins with an AFC wild card game here on CBS. Patriots will travel to Jacksonville to face the AFC Central champion Jaguars. Next Sunday, right here on CBS. You know, Jacksonville has so many injuries, right? Of course, Mark Brunel being the key one, his buddy Tony Baselli. But uh, New England did not play very well today, so they've got to regroup next week as well. Second down and five, Davis. Stood up and belted by Miles and a gain of four. And you can see the trend right here to feed the ball to Terrell Davis, pound away at the Seattle Seahawks. A good defensive unit right here, solid football players. I mean, we're talking to Michael Sinclair and Sam Adams last night. Kevin, you and I had a chance to spend some time with them. They said, look, we're not going to come out here and get embarrassed. Our family's watching us play. Nobody wants to go out and get their fannies kicked. We're going to play hard. And it, they were talking about personal pride but it also reflects their respect for their coach and a guy like Mike Shanahan of course has to try to recover some of the what he calls the edge that is lost once you clinch and the games after you have clinched are meaningless in a lot of ways you're not playing to gain any further advantage and so it's tough mentally and emotionally to keep that edge Shanahan became the highest paid coach in the NFL in August 
And it was good they passed that stadium bill here in Colorado and specifically Denver because Pat Bowen said if there's no new stadium I've got to sell the team and Shanahan's contract is directly tied to owner Pat Bowen. I think this team's going to be in Denver a long time. It's third and one. Davis with the block from Griffiths. And I think he's shy of the first down. It'll be on the spot. Forward motion. Same play they ran earlier with John Elway being the backside blocker. That time the flow was quick because of the short yardage situation. They're going to have to bring it out and measure it one more time. You know, John Elway earlier this week on Wednesday, they've lost two ball games now, won 13 in a row. John Elway being the leader. They break up and they go to their offensive and defensive meetings and he kind of pulls and holds court a little bit with the offensive guys and says look we're just playing tight the tighter we play the harder we try the worse we play let's relax go back to our original methods of having fun playing loose and start winning some football games and I was very interested to hear Mike Shanahan's response you know Elway doesn't say much he said but when he talks everybody is listening. It almost makes you wonder if they would have lost earlier in the season would it have affected their month of December the way it's been affected all the pressure being 13 and 0. Well I tell you Minnesota probably didn't have the same pressure that the that the Denver Broncos had they kind of were in the draft Joe Gibbs would love me here say that in the draft but Minnesota you know had because Tampa Bay beat them earlier they weren't measuring up against that perfect year so there was more pressure more emotional and mental drain on this team especially coming off of the Super Bowl year I can tell you coming off the Super Bowl year everybody's gunning for you Tom Ruin is second in the NFL in punting sends this one deep and Joseph back at his eight yard line the former college quarterback at McNeese State breaking tackles and he's out to the 28 tackled by Keith Burns again the leading special teamer for Denver in the AFC there are certain players that just have an impact Terrell Davis for the Denver Broncos no question about it He's the leader of this football team on the ground, especially Vinny Test, Testaverde having almost a perfect season. And Fred Taylor, the rookie for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And then Zach Thomas, the defensive star of a no-name defense in Miami. And then Drew Bledsoe, they need him healthy, get that hand ready to go. And Bruce Smith in Buffalo. You know, each of those playoff teams have a key guy. And those are some of them. Seattle gets it back from the 28, first and 10. Waters back down by middle linebacker Glenn Cadrens. Alan Aldridge used to fill that slot, but he left as a free agent to Detroit, and Cadrez fills the slot, which is an interesting thing about Mike Shanahan. The Broncos have lost just two starters. The aforementioned Alan Aldridge to Detroit and guard Brian Habib, who went as a free agent to Seattle. But Shanahan notorious for signing and keeping the players he wants. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll talk about it a little bit later. But with the Cleveland Browns coming into the 1999 season, signing free agents is crucial for everybody. Second down 11. Pocket crumbles. Kitna throws. It's incomplete. May have been tapped by Mobley on a pass intended for running back Ricky Waters. Good man to man coverage down the field. That's what John Kitna gives this ball club, though. He gives him a little mobility. Warren Moon, a terrific career, but doesn't have the mobility at this stage of it that John Kitna does. I think still Warren Moon can nearly help somebody somewhere. But you can see it move, and that ball was well thrown. Ricky Waters should have caught it. Warren Moon's going to could next year really help a lot of football teams that would need either a backup or a mentor kind of a quarterback or somebody to step in for one year while they get somebody else ready. He may not be back next year. He counts $5 million against the cap. Third and 11, getting a chase and drop time by Alfred Williams. You see Alfred Williams with his little uh, post sack action there, choreographed right off of uh, downtown New York somewhere. John Kidd can only elude the rush for so long. You know, it used to be when you started doing this, they were penalizing you, but the league is suddenly the, uh, not a point of emphasis anymore, as we see. So after the defense gets their first sack in eight quarters for the Broncos, the kick by Fiegels is out of bounds. Now the question is where they'll mark it out at the 42 yard line which is disappointing to Fields. The NFC has their impact players as well. Randy Moss what a terrific rookie. 
Going to be fun watching him over the years. Jamal Anderson of the Atlanta Falcons, I think maybe the most valuable player in the league. And Troy Aikman, the Dallas Cowboys, they need his leadership right now. Garrison Hurst of the San Francisco 49ers has really come on the scene and, of course, a favorite of everybody, whether you're a Packer fan or not. Reggie White and Jake Plummer. Boy, is he going to be fun as well. And Rich. First and ten. Deep drop back by Elway. Got a good block by Sway. Now he's brought down. Philip Daniels with his second sack today. The Seahawks came in as the number two defense in the league in sacks. They've now got 53. Now, this is another one of those plenty of protection throws. Nothing happening downfield. Elway just runs out of time trying to buy some more time. Philip Daniels in pursuit. Now, this is a football team that is still playing hard. When you see a defensive line pursuing a, an elusive quarterback like Elway as long as they are, Philip Daniels, one of the stalwarts on that team. It's a credit to this Seattle team. Four wide receivers, second down 19 for Elway. Guns a pass, which is cut by tight end Shannon Shaw. And a great catch it is, his 60th of the year. He beat Willie Williams. It's a gain of 16 yards. John Elway playing with a hip flexor now. He's got a little bit of problem when you stride into the ball, and you need that stride to throw one like this. Online, look at that. That's a matter of, you talk about a game of inches, that's a game of inches, and also the, the uh, range and the reach that Shannon Sharp has helps that, but John Elway can still put the ball inside of a dime. It's third and five from the 47. Elway with time, throws again to Sharp. He's got the first down, and he's deep in the Seattle territory at the 36. Tackled by Jay Bellamy, another gain of 16 yards on the heels of a 16-yard gain before to Sharp. Shannon Sharp looked like he hurt his back a little bit that time. He just releases from the right side, turns to the outside in a zone defense. As he comes down hard right there, he got up with both hands on his back. Like he twisted it a little bit. You see him on the sideline now getting some attention. Injuries were not a problem for this team up until a couple weeks ago. Doesn't take long for him to come, though. First and ten, Davis, a block from Jones and Griffith. And rookie Anthony Simmons there to make the tackle as Philadelphia has taken a four-point lead at halftime on the New York Giants. Giants were still alive in the playoff race coming into today. That's right. They, the Arizona game, of course, affects that one. If Arizona wins and... Well, if Arizona wins, they're in. If Arizona loses and the Giants win, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are in the are in the playoff. And that's what Tampa Bay did today, whitewashing Cincinnati. And that eliminated the Giants from the playoffs. They can still affect who goes, Arizona or Tampa. Second down and 12 from the Seattle 38. McCaffrey in motion. Again, throws outside, caught by fullback Howard Griffith, who is one of the true leaders on this team. Tackled by Simmons, it's a gain of five. Good, solid bull rush up the middle, but couldn't get there in time. We've reached the two-minute warning. Johnson, I'd like to see some ideas on saving the company money. I'll be back first thing in the morning. Thank, 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 thank. Well, Johnson, Staples, that'll save us a lot of money. You are a genius. For all the supplies you need at guaranteed low prices, it's Staples, plus free delivery. Mike Ditka for 1-800-COLLECT. Hey, come on, ladies, hey, get mad! Make believe I just insulted your mama. Or make believe I just traded you. Make believe I just called you collect without using 1-800-COLLECT. Hey, but it's 10 cents a minute every evening with 1-800-COLLECT. Stop, stop, guys. I was on the kid. Stop. 1-800-COLLECT. 10 cents a minute. Kevin Harlan, Sam White, Mile High Stadium, Denver, two-minute warning. The Seattle defense, let me tell you, the Denver Broncos are moving the ball now against a team that leads the league with 51 sacks. They had 42 last year. They've sacked Elway 16 times in the last six ball games. Seattle has 41 takeaways, which leads the league in 24 interceptions. Only Miami has more. It's third and a long six. They bring the blitz. There goes a flag pass deflected and caught on the corner at the 20-yard line. Grabbed by Rod Smith. 13-yard gain, but let's see what that flag is about as Sam Adams again 
tapped an Elway pass. It's the third time they've done it today. This one against the Seahawks. Seahawks were coming with a the blitz. They were trying Onside to tie up. defense penalty is declined. First off. They were trying to time up the snap count, and Elway outsmarted them and held the count a little bit. And as soon as they were in the neutral zone, he snapped the ball. That gave Elway a free throw. He let it go, and Rod Smith came up with a big catch. Inside the 20, first and 10, Elway with the handoff to Davis. And spins for a couple before he is gobbled up by Matt LeBounce. Second down. Terrell Davis going to keep getting the ball. Elway's going to use the little play action as he has. A little bit of out of pocket where they call it a naked or a bootleg. Naked me. Don't look at me that way. No, 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 no. There's a I'm, I'm waiting you for the explanation. You fake the run one way and you're out. Roll out the other way and nobody's blocking. You're out there all alone. Thank you. Elway has hit nine consecutive passes. Second down and eight. He's going to his second receiver. In the end zone for Smith. Incomplete, covered by Joseph and Fred Thomas. Just terrific inside battling going on. You see the defensive line, all kinds of stunts. The offensive line of the Denver Broncos doing a great job of switching off, giving Elway time to find a late Rod Smith. He goes up with one hand. Boy, I used to tell the guys, if you can get one hand on it, you take the other one up there. There's very rare occasions that you gain anything with just one arm reaching out. Elway will burn his second timeout, one remaining with 106 to play here in the first half. Ricky Waters began the game with the touchdown run of four yards, then a 33-yard touchdown pass by John Elway to Rod Smith. And coming up in the NASDAQ Amex Halftime Report, join Jim Nance, Marcus Allen, Brett Jones, and Mike Lombardi with scores, highlights, and the playoff update. All coming up in the NASDAQ Amex Halftime Report. Green Bay won today in the NFC. We'll talk about the NFC in a second. But if San Francisco wins, the Packers go to San Francisco. If San Francisco loses against the Rams, then they go to Green Bay. Okay, can you say that again just real fast for me so I can just get... <laughs> It'll be on the air as we uh, finish this ball game, but it clears all up. By the way, San Francisco leading the Rams 10 to 7. The Jets, Buffalo, and Atlanta all winners today. Third and a long eight from the Seattle 18. Elway looks at his four wide receivers to the end zone. He's got a receiver. Seven shot. Touchdown. Seattle came with an all out blitz. Everybody's coming except cover people. Jay Pelletty just couldn't stay with Shannon Sharp. 101 on a straight up the field move. There was no. Faking involved, just pure speed coming straight up the field. Here's Sharp now. He's going to go straight up the field. Jay Bellamy trying to stay with him. I think Jay thinks the ball has to be thrown early. It wasn't thrown that quick. Beautiful play by the Denver Broncos. Extra point now by Elam is up and away. That was a drive authored by Shannon Sharp with consecutive catches of 16 yards and 16 yards and then a 17 yard touchdown pass from Elway. Elway his second touchdown throw and Denver's got their first lead today. That's why he's going to the seventh Pro Bowl of his career and leads all tight ends in the National Football League in receiving yards. He's really a large wide receiver that they line up in what's called the tight end position because he is a he's really a receiver. Someday he will be in camp. Monday on CBS. Feeling a little bloated from the holidays? Lose pounds and gain laughs when Kevin James and Jerry Stiller star in The King of Queens. That's tomorrow on America's Address, CBS. Seattle Seahawks have battled this entire half. They trail only 14 to 7. They're right in this ball game now with a minute to go. They've got a chance maybe to get back on the board before the half, but at worst, or, or at least, they don't want to do anything foolish to give Denver a chance to push this lead wide open right now. Just stay within seven or do better if you can. Line drive kickoff by Elam. On a bounce taken by reserve fullback Reggie Brown and wisely just falls on it near the 20 yard line. Well, we told you we'd give you the NFC playoff look, and here it comes. 
Minnesota, these are seeds, really, for uh, playoff seeds. Minnesota number one, of course, with 14 and one record. Atlanta with a terrific year. Wishing uh, Dan Reeves the best in his recovery from heart surgery. Dallas has clinched. I don't know that if they'd have been in any other division other than the NFC East, if they had, if they would have won that division. <laughs> San Francisco, Green Bay, of course, and then this, the only undecided, undecided spot, Arizona or Tampa Bay. Dallas plays tonight against the Redskins. Kitten on first and ten. He got a block and he throws it downfield and it's caught on a curl at the 39-yard line by Joey Galloway. A gain of 18. He beat cornerback Ray Crockett. A lot of confidence in a young quarterback to. Trevor Price may have touched that pass by John Kitten. We've seen Elway have three of his passes batted down at the line of scrimmage today already. That's the first for Kitten. You see him talking to the referee right there. What he's saying is, I was looking for you on that long pass two plays ago. When I throw a ball down the field, I want to be able to turn right to you and call timeout immediately. And I turned around and you weren't there. Well, of course, he's saying it's not my job to be standing right next to you. I've got to follow the ball, too. What presence of mind for a kid starting his sixth game. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. Call it quick to the nearest official. Second down and 10. Kitna again with time. Fires a pass high and it whistles over the head of Joey Galloway, who is covered by a thicket of Bronco defenders. It'll be third and 10. Sean Kitna has a very, very strong arm as we have seen here he was 42 of 51 in the preseason I got a chance to see him play against Cincinnati in the preseason and he's very impressive because he's got all the shots he's nine for 16 today but he's got all the, the layoff throws as well as the on, online throws down the field and he's from tiny central Washington in NAIA school would have been found if the nephew of Dennis Erickson had been playing on that ball club it's third and ten for Kitna again given great time Winds up throws. It's deflected and intercepted. Picked off by linebacker Glenn Catrez after it ricocheted off the palms of a defensive back, Darian Gordon. Kitna picked off the first Seattle turnover, and the Broncos have 11 seconds with which to work in one timeout. One thing you didn't want to have happen right here give them any time at all. Plenty of time to find an open receiver, but more defenders than rushers again is the strategy of the Denver Broncos. And he, this is a forced ball. No question about it. He should not have thrown that ball. But when you're looking at more defenders than you're used to, sometimes you feel like there's got to be an opening because you've got time to throw it. Now, there's 11 seconds left. All they need is about uh, 10 yards, and they're looking at another long field goal. Yeah, there's field goal range, and then there's Jason Elam field goal range. He's already got one 63 yards this year. From the 50 and four receivers platoon, it's first and 10 for Elway and the shotgun. Winds up, throws a pass. Good catch made by Rod Smith. He's to the 36. L.A. takes a timeout with six seconds remaining in the half. And here comes the aforementioned Jason Elam. Remember I was talking a minute ago about John uh, Kitna calling timeout real quick. L.A. did it and got a chance for Elam to go after another field goal. His longest 63 yards back in October. There it is. Everyone waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and nearly a record. Tom Dempsey, New Orleans Saints, of course, right there with him. There is wind. It seems to be more of a breeze in the face of Elam. He missed one last week in Miami. He's already missed one today from 42 yards away. This from 55 yards. If he misses, he usually misses to the left. Elam puts it up, and it is the upright and it's the upright to his left whenever you're kicking him long you pull just a little bit if you're gonna miss that's where it goes he's missed two in a row and three in the last two games that's the end of the first half with the score it goes 14 Seattle 7 Elway with two touchdown passes stay tuned for all the scores and highlights on the Nasdaq Amex halftime report after this message and a word from your local CBS station
Hi, everybody. Happy holidays. Jim Nance with you on the NASDAQ MX Halftime Report here along with Brent Jones, Marcus Allen, Michael Lombardi. At halftime, the Broncos with that lead. The offense starting to get cracking again here. Elway over 200 yards and two touchdown passes, Brent. Jim, the Bronco fans can relax. John Elway looks like he's back. Terrell Davis only needs 88 more yards to get to that 2,000. I can hardly wait for the second half to begin. I hope he gets it. All right, let's talk about the playoffs here. The AFC picture has now been crystallized. New England will play at Jacksonville next week, while Buffalo at Miami and the Patriots Jacksonville. Some symmetry in that matchup, Michael. Absolutely. Both quarterbacks will be questionable going into the game. Both teams have a lot of players injured. Jacksonville's got 13 players on IR. New England does not play well on the road. And meanwhile, Buffalo at Miami. Will Flutie be back for the Bills next week? Flutie's going to play, but Rob Johnson, the way he played today, looks like he could fill in very well. All right, on the NFC side, still one slot open. Arizona one. One half away from its first playoff spot in a non-strike year since 1975. They have to win. If they win, they'll be at Dallas. Meanwhile, if San Francisco beats the Rams, they will host Green Bay. Should the Niners lose, they will be playing at the Packers next week, Wild Card Weekend. So let's go through the scores. We'll show you what's happening. Cardinals do have the lead at halftime. The one touchdown, Adrian Morrell for the Cardinals. He got in from three yards out. Sunny skies at Sun Devil Stadium, and really sunny after this touchdown was given to them. Marcus, you said not the right call. A good strong run here, but he extends the ball, and I don't think he crossed the line from here. May have touched the white line, but we're not quite sure the official made the call. Touchdown. Gave him the touchdown. Again, Cardinals win. They are in and would play at Dallas. Meanwhile, the 49ers, their situation. They're in the third quarter. The only Niner touchdown, a pass to Jerry Rice. The Rams are very feisty here today. 49ers need to win to host the Packers next week wild card weekend. Giants were eliminated earlier today with the Tampa Bay victory and the Eagles do Staley has 94 yards rushing and a touchdown for the Eagles. Earlier today Atlanta jumped all over the Dolphins up 21 to nothing just eight minutes into the game. They lost the quarterback Chris Chandler with a bruise back. He'll be back for the playoffs. Steve DeBerg took over handed off quite often to Jamal Anderson. He carried the load 100 yard game again. Atlanta closes it out with 14 wins only two losses. Testa Verde spread the wealth around for the Jets today. It's great as a receiver when the quarterback spreads around Jim, everybody can share in the good cheer. Four different players caught touchdown from Vinny. And meanwhile, here's Johnson. You talked about him, Michael. Yeah, it's his third touchdown, ninth touchdown of the year for Eric Moulds, who's going to the Pro Bowl, and he deserves to be there. And what a year Eric Moulds had for the Bills. The Saints close it out 6-10. and 10. The Packers, not that strong today, but they won, Marcus. Far between when we see this combination a lot. You're right, Jim. They didn't play well to win the game. They finish 11-5 and five regular season, and Trent Dilfer and the Bucks blow out winner over the Bengals embarrassed them. This was the opening score for them. A long bomb to Rob Thomas. They register their first shutout since 1985. And the Ravens, 6 and 10. March of Broda probably out tomorrow, but will go out with a win. Ross closes his first losing year, seven years as a head coach. Panthers close out their season with a second straight win, their only two-game winning streak of the year. That really hurt the Redskins own the Panthers' first round draft choice. Thanks for watching the NASDAQ Amex Halftime Report. One more look at the Elway touchdown pass that gave the Broncos the lead. Presentation of the Nasdaq MX Halftime Report is sponsored by the Nasdaq MX Market Group, the market of markets. John Elway has thrown two touchdown passes. The Broncos lead Seattle 14 to 7. With Sam White, this is Kevin Harlan. John Elway has been on fire. He's hit 11 of his last 12 receivers. Well, you know, he had the big day against Kansas City uh, in week 14. Last week had a rating of 26 point something. Very, very low. And he rebounded today when he had to. Let's look at the stats here in the first half. Everything, of course, looking uh, in the direction, especially in total yards right there, 280 to 106. And the time of possession pretty much even. The Denver Broncos now will be feeding that ball to Terrell Davis, trying to pound away. John Kitna will have his biggest test of the year and really the biggest test of the year for the Seattle Seahawks because it's the second half of the last game of the regular season and they know it's the last game of their season to see exactly how much fight they have left in them. So far today they have played a beautiful ball game Kevin. By the way Terrell Davis in his quest for 2000 yards 82 yards he needs 88 more. And the second half is underway with Peterson's boot. Vaughn Hebron will take it a couple yards deep in the end zone. Around the wedge, and he breaks a tackle and then bangs off bodies up to the 26. And that's where we'll see Denver begin it.
with Mike Kroll, the former Bronco, making the tackle. And here's John Elway, 19 of 17 with a pick, 96 yards. Going up against a defense here in Seattle that's had a, a strong year. We mentioned earlier, 41 takeaways, 24 interceptions coming into this ball game. Only Miami has done better with 29. 51 sacks coming into this game. They sacked John Elway twice in the first half. John Elway, on the other hand, has always had big days against the Seattle Seahawks. On the 26, first down and 10, it's Davis. Up the middle he goes, wrapped up by rookie linebacker Anthony Simmons, picking up four. The NFC playoff picture looks like this as we look at it one more time. The number three seed will host either Arizona or Tampa Bay. If Arizona wins, they go to Dallas. If they lose, Tampa Bay will go to Dallas. And uh, as we look down here, San Francisco or Green Bay will host the other team, depending on who wins and loses today. From the 32nd down and six, Elway gets a block from Davis. Here's a pass across the middle, caught by McCaffrey. Who's having a career year? He'll be close to a first down. McCaffrey worried about his speed in the offseason, hired a track coach to make him faster. And he gained, in doing so, he gained over 1,000 yards, as did Rod Smith, his counterpart on the other side. But McCaffrey, you know, a Stanford guy, Stanford guy throwing to a Stanford guy. You know, there's something going on there. But he's, he's one of those guys that not only gets open because he's got speed and, and good hands, he's got good sense of defense, too. He finds the open holes in the zones. Sinclair and Deshaun Miles wrap up Davis after a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. So look at the Minnesota Vikings with the best record in football here. Their best punch, their explosive offense, and, of course, the history, Gary Anderson, the, the automatic 35 for 35 field goals. The Achilles heel as they go into this is special teams. They've fallen down a little bit there. And part of the equation, something that is an, uh, kind of an intangible, the dome field advantage. They'll be playing in front of a loud crowd, and they got the home field all the way. Second down and seven. Deep drop for Elway. Rolling out of the pocket. Has to get to the 47. Breaks a tackle from Deshaun Miles. He dives for the first time to the Seattle 49. He picks up 11. And on the previous play, they have officially given three yards to Davis, the all-time leading Denver Bronco rusher, breaking the record of Floyd Little. Well, this is another run, not quite like Terrell Davis would do it, but he's stepped up into the pocket. That's when everything opened up for him. Before that scares me as a former coach, because if he already got a hip flexor, which is much like a growing muscle, you can't kind of reach one leg over the other with that hip flexor. A run like that is where that thing pulls again. First and 10 from the 49, handoff to Derek Lavelle. Guy who used to play for Seattle, made the team as a rookie free agent back in the 90s season, picks up two right there. The great thing about Lavelle and the depth of the Bronco running backs is that on most teams, he would start. Well, they've got depth here. One of the reasons they have depth here is free agents like to come to Denver, and the reason they like to come to Denver and other teams that are winning is they got a chance to go to the Super Bowl. He has free agents that are available around the league. They like to go to teams that have a chance to win big. Lavelle, Bill Romanowski, Ed McCaffrey, Howard Griffith, Keith Trailer, Neil Smith, just some of the free agents reeled in here to Denver. Second down and eight. More time for Elway, a pass to McCaffrey, lassoed as he was working on quarterback Fred Thomas. Short of the first down by a yard, great catch nonetheless, gaining seven. McCaffrey just taught 6-5, Fred Thomas at 5-9, 101 outside. They brought the blitz. Here's the ball thrown high, perfectly thrown, because the coverage is there. There's nothing wrong with this coverage. The ball is just placed where Fred Thomas can't get there. Thomas breaks. He's there with the ball, just over his outstretched hands and into the 6-foot, 5-inch reach of Ed McCaffrey. And going to his first Pro Bowl. It's third and one inside the 40. Davis breaks a tackle. Davis gets a block from McCaffrey and has a first down. Tumble into the 35. He picks up five. And the second best record in the NFC belongs to the Atlanta Falcons. And let's see what they've got going into the playoffs. Their best punch, Jamal Anderson. I think he may be the most valuable player in football right now. A balanced offense all with Chris Chandler when he's healthy. Their Achilles heel, lack of playoff experience. Anytime you're in there for the first time in a long time is a little bit going against you. And the intangible there, part of the equation is they're playing for Dan Reeves, who's recovering, of course, from heart surgery. First and 10 from the 35. Davis sent with Cortez Kennedy riding him down after a gain of five to the 30. 
The Dallas Cowboys go into the playoffs in, as the Eastern winner. Their best punch, Troy Aikman and his experience and leadership. Their Achilles heel, of course, is the injuries with Erwin Smith and others injured as well as Deion Sanders. And of course, part of the equation, they've played and won the weakest division in football in 1998. Deion Sanders' injury may be more serious than previously thought as Davis comes off after being awarded the game ball and becoming the Broncos' all-time leading rusher. 99 yards today. Second down and five. Elway rolls out of the pocket, throws by Sinclair, hits Shannon Sharp, stiff arms his way into Chad Brown to the 19-yard line. And the Denver Broncos are reading the strategy of Seattle. Seattle is trying to stop a run, expecting the run. They fake the little toss. This is that naked I talked about. Notice there's nobody there but John Elway and Shannon Sharp. Chad Brown has to peel with Sharp, but he's also got to respect the possibility that John Elway could run the ball. Nice little execution of something they probably run about 500 times. Yeah, no quarterback in the history of the NFL has run the ball more than John Elway. Tenth play of the drive, first down. Elway the pump fake, and he's got Smith to the two, first and goal. He beat Willie Williams again. It's a gain of 17. Willie Williams was reading the slant, or about a three-step, and then a sharp break to the inside. It was designed, and John Elway pumps just as the, uh, as Willie Williams breaks, and then right in behind it, Rod Smith goes back behind. Safety can't get over fast enough. That's Daryl Williams. So between Willie Williams and Daryl Williams, Rod Smith has the football. Smith with seven catches. First and goal from the two. Davis is in. Fake handoff by Elway. Davis is open. Touchdown. Fake. Shannon Sharp deep in the corner. You see Sharp here, and here in the flat is Terrell Davis. Coverage is there, it's just soft. You can't have soft coverage on the goal line. You can't give him anything. Healing will try to put it up and in, and he does. John Elway has thrown three touchdown passes. Terrell Davis claps that his second of the year. It's fair to say the Broncos are back in business. All right, Captain, we're going to have a coin toss now. If there's a team, we'll call it in the air. Um, we want a good, clean game. Um, we're all professionals here. Does anyone have change for a dollar? What? Want to get away? Southwest has your ticket to freedom. For only $99 or less, you can fly coast to coast when you purchase by January 19th and travel January 5th through June 3rd. You are now free to move about the country. I heard this story about a group of tourists who were searching for Western heroes. Come on, baby. When they got a little off track. We're sunk. Luckily, their hero found them. Guarda. The legendary Ford F-150. Gary Cooper. Yeah, Looks like you could use a hand. With an available 5.4-liter Triton V8 that delivers more pulling power than Dodge or Chevy. Now there's a happy ending. Ford F-Series, built for tough. If you want to... Where's the waitress? Where's the waitress? Attract... the waitress's attention. Try ordering something... So, who belongs to this good-looking one? More tasteful. Bolder, richer, creamier. Killian's Irish Red. One look says a lot. And now the Late Show question of the week. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Rocky Road. I got it. I said Rocky Road. This telecast is copyrighted by the NFL for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. When you're a mile high, you got to get that air. That's what Davis is doing as he just caught the touchdown pass. The line drive kick by Elam on the 19-yard line. Picked up by Reggie Brown and head over heels. He is sent to the 29. 
Whacked by Derek Laville. John Elway just put together a perfect drive. He went five of five. It's all Denver, 21 to seven. Tim and Ed are neighbors, sort of. You see, Ed thought Tim's hair was too long, and Tim thought Ed's pants were too short. Then Tim brought home the new redesigned 260-horse Ford Mustang GT, just when Ed was pulling out his Boss 302. Nice Mustang. You too. <laughs> wow. Just think if everyone owned a Mustang. And the world and the world will be a better place for you. For you. Ford Mustang GT, built to last. If you want to Where's the waitress? Where's the waitress? attract the waitress's attention, try ordering something. So, who belongs to this good-looking one? More tasteful. Bolder, richer, creamier, Gillian's Irish Red. One look says a lot. How do you keep the world's leading companies 100% satisfied? Just make them 100% successful. That's how Siebel has become the global leader in information systems for world-class sales, marketing, and customer service organizations. We do whatever it takes to make sure our customers are 100% satisfied, 100% successful. Siebel, the global leader in sales, marketing, and customer service systems. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. And by Killian's Irish Red, which reminds you one look says a lot. It was 50 below earlier in the week with the wind chill here in Denver with Sam White, Kevin Harlan. We're at mile high, Seattle is staggering. First and 10 from the 29. Kit in a rush, throws down the sideline. It's caught by Pritchard at the 47. In a 19, Seahawks needed that play in the biggest of ways. Beautiful thing. The ball's going to come faked here, and he's going to drop straight back behind the pocket. Now look at Pritchard back into this corner. He's going to find an open spot. That ball is not thrown to the receiver. It's thrown to an area. It's the job of the receiver to get there on a timed throw after the fake. Pritchard well, used to play for Denver. Little center there, too, I imagine. Empty backfield, five wide receivers for Kittner with the first down. Short drop, quick throw, intercepted and tripped by Mobley after it went right through the hands of Pritchard. Right now, let's take a look at the CBS Sportsline question of the week. Who would you pick as the top coach in the NFL this year? Dennis Green, Bill Parcells, Dan Reeves, or Mike Shanahan? Log on to vote at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online at keyword CBS Sportsline. I think I may have given away my choice there. I think Dan Reeves deserves it. I think he had the least going for him into this season and sent such a terrific job. Now second down, second down and ten. Good block by Waters. Outside it goes to fullback Max Strong, who makes just his eighth catch of the season. Knocked out of bounds by tackle Harold Hasselbach. And close to a first down. Now you're seeing uh, John Kitna getting a lot of work coming from behind. Still plenty of time to get back into this ball game. They're taking their intermediate passes, making sure that they've mixed the run and the throw. How many teams would love a young quarterback like John Kitna? Oh, they're they're going to keep track of this guy right now. You know, next year the Cleveland Browns come in. They, the cap next year looks like it's going to be about fifty-eight and a half million dollars. Cleveland, of course, we'll talk about it in a minute. It's going to have most of the money because they've got no carryover cap. Third and one, Waters. Hot down by Mobley. Dives close to the 43, which was the first down. Now, Cleveland's going to have a lot of dough. Well, then they'll have what's called the expansion draft. They'll take 30 to 50 players from other teams around the league. They have to spend 20 million. So 20 million from 58 and a half, at least 38 and a half million that they have for free agency. But the lesson that everybody learned when Jacksonville and Carolina came into the league a few years ago is that more teams are signing their important free agents now. So there aren't as many of those free agents floating around as there were the first year round. They just learn from it. You know, Jacksonville went out and saved a little bit and signed players in year two and three. Carolina, of course, went out and spent most of their money in year one, and they didn't last as long. Their, their free agents, of course, got old and didn't work out as well. But the key lesson learned here is that everybody else, as we look at this fourth down situation, everybody else 
around the league is signing their key free agents. So even though there's only one expansion team, there aren't as many free agents available. I think people and coaches now like the fact they want to keep the guys they know about as opposed to taking a chance on a guy they've never had before. Absolutely. Not only do they know their football ability, they know what they're made of in that locker room and off the field. Fourth down and the length of the football. And off Waters, he's got the first down, slicing his way to the 40-yard line. Tackled by Glenn Contreras. A big first down and a nice gamble by Dennis Erickson. Well, it was a gamble he had to take. Dennis Erickson knew that they needed to get back into the ball game right now with six and a half left. This football team has fought for him last week, came from behind against the Colts in Indianapolis on the road. Nobody's thinking about anything except how to beat the Denver Broncos. That's a credit to the whole organization in Seattle. Five receivers, empty backfield for Kitna from the 40. Looks one way, got the block from Ballard, then throws a pass, which is brought into the 34 by Waters. Tackled by Mobley. And a nice quick look off to his secondary receiver by the young quarterback, John Kitna. Monday on CBS, Crosby kicks off a night of comedy, then see why Entertainment Weekly singled out King of Queens, and Everybody Loves Raymond as two of the best TV shows of 98, followed by Monday night's number one new comedy, Becker, starring Ted Danson. It's all tomorrow on CBS. Second down, long three, and they blow that one dead before it has a chance to go. Someone in the interior line moves. Ball start, 66 offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. That's Pete Kendall, the left guard, who calls all the protections and, and the plays up in the line of scrimmage. You know, when you break the... The huddle, you go to the line of scrimmage, the quarterback will have called a run or a pass, and then the offensive line, once they see the defensive front, they'll make their individual calls. Pete Kidna starts that out. It's only the fourth penalty the entire game. Denver played against Miami last week. They didn't commit a single penalty. The Dolphins are right, second down and eight. Pocket troubles. Kidna gets away, and now he's put down. He is set by Trevor Price. That's the second he's had today. Coming straight up the middle of the field. Nobody really touches Trevor Price. Comes back around. Never gives up. One of the trademarks of this Denver Bronco defense, and really you see it on both sides of the ball, their offense as well, is that they play until after they hear the whistle. They don't start and anticipate the end of the play. They play when they hear the whistle. It's third and 13 from the shotgun kidnap. He's got the tight end for you, but he's going to go deep, and it's off the fingertips of linebacker Bill Romanowski. And a pass intended deep downfield for Brian Blades, and his tight end for you was wide open in the middle. Romanowski's reading the quarterback's eyes right here. See, he never takes his eyes off the quarterback and then tries to time the, the jump to knock that one down. Kitten have forced that ball in there on a third down and very long, and as a result, Seattle has to punt. They got fourth down about 14. Here's the finesse punter, Jeff Fiegels, formerly of Philadelphia and Arizona. He pooches this inside the 15 and out of bounds, close to the 15-yard line. Didn't look pretty, but boy, is that an effective punt. It's toward the sideline. The ball's not in the air very long. Elway with three touchdown passes. It's all Denver. My name is Jim. And I am the beer man, and I'm proud to sell this Coors Light. So please do not call me beer dude. Don't yell beer jockey, Bolly boy, or suds buddy, and I'll be happy to pour you a frost brewed Coors Light. Stay away from brew brother, Captain Cup, and Sir Pour a Lot, and you'll get your Rocky Mountain refreshment faster than you can say Lager Lugger. I am beer man. Hey, beer stud. You see a business deal. At Sprint, we see data. Data that lays the groundwork, that allows people to collaborate. It's the sharing of information that helps build business. And with Sprint Ion, our integrated on-demand network, we'll soon be linked together with even greater ease, flexibility, and power. Because business runs on data, and data runs on Sprint. Over the years, many have tried to duplicate the success of 60 Minutes. But if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. Join Dan Rather, Bob Simon, Vicki Mabry, and Charlie Rose for 60 Minutes 2, 
the new Wednesday edition of A Sunday Tradition, coming to CBS January 13th. A tradition unlike any other. The Masters on CBS Sports. Well, it would appear the defending Super Bowl champion Broncos are going to rally around the 2,000-yard attempt by Terrell Davis. He's got 99 coming into this drive. Ironically enough, he's been held to less than 100 yards in three of the last four games. And we were told directly by Michael Sinclair and Sam Adams last night that they didn't want their name associated with him breaking that record. So we've got a real matchup going here. From the 12, and movement, they stop that point. But you could bet Denver's job now is going to be to feed him the ball, and Seattle ball knows start. that as well. 74 offense. Five-yard penalty still first down. Second Bronco penalty today. Harry Swain is trying to get off of the ball. Probably a quick count. And when you get a quick count, sometimes even a silent count. Silent count means that the quarterback, once he gets under center, just kind of nudges the center and the ball comes up and everyone reacts to the ball. Tries to anticipate that snap count. That's when you get those kind of penalties. It's first and 15. Elway hands off to Davis. Good pass. This kind of made the obligatory tap. This is Davis's 31st career 100-yard game, his 11th of this season. And this, here's the strategy going on. Eight men are around the ball for the Seattle Seahawks. They're trying to fill gaps. Michael Sinclair last night said, here's how you stop them. Everybody fills a gap. But what uh, Terrell Davis does is he makes you leave your gap with his moves. He baits you into the gap and then peels back or breaks to the outside. With that run, Davis has just passed Earl Campbell for the fourth best year ever by a running back. He breaks a tackle at Sinclair. He breaks a tackle at Roy Williams. And he runs up to the 26 in game six. Hey, boy, you can sense the crowd knows what's going on right now, that they're trying to, they're looking at what may be another 2,000-yard year by a running back. We're watching history. So he has just passed Earl Campbell for the fourth best running season ever in the NFL. Dickerson, Sanders, and O.J. Simpson with 2,000. And Terrell Davis, as you mentioned, just moves into the next. And, of course, the next place he goes is past O.J. He's been taken out. Lavelle's been put in. Elway on first and ten. Goes outside. Nice move. A nifty move by the elusive Derek Lavelle to the 43, a gain of 17. Kevin, for the first time today, after the catch, it looked like the Seattle Seahawks didn't have the same pursuit they've had all day long. Let's see if we can see it from the end zone here. The ball is caught off the left side. Just missed it. Anthony Simmons, a rookie. Now watch everyone. You see people back here? All of this, not quite the same hustle and pursuit we saw earlier in the game. Which tells you what? That they know they're playing in the last half of the season. Last half of the last game of the season. From the 43, first and 10. Blocked by Lavelle and a pass caught at midfield by wide receiver Willie Green. Gain of seven. Let's look at the NFC profiles again. The San Francisco 49ers in the playoffs, as usual. Their best punch, Steve Young. Got to keep him healthy. Still one of the best ever. Best running game in the NFC to go with it. The Achilles heel, maybe that pass defense and a rookie field goal kicker if it comes down to that. And, of course, the other part of the equation is they're only four and four on the road, and they're going to be on the road a lot in the playoffs. Davis is back in. He gets the call. Blocked by Griffith. Davis was stymied by Riddick Parker and Chad Brown and picks up a couple. Give him a yard and a half. What Mike Shanahan is doing here, he wants to get the ball to Terrell Davis, but he doesn't want to put him in a position where he's fatigued and maybe susceptible to an injury. So he's going to spell him a little bit, let him come out as he did a moment ago, get him back in the game, hand it to him a couple of times, and keep him rested as he runs. He's got 122 yards, and he needs 43 to get to 2,000. They get 48. Hand off to Davis. 
Brought down by rookie linebacker Deshaun Miles. And more and more you see the Seattle Seahawks creeping up around the line of scrimmage again trying to do what they said they were going to do last night. That is everybody in a gap. The problem with that if you get everybody right at the line of scrimmage in a gap if he splits that gap he's got the big run down the field. Did you notice just a minute ago we had a close up of Terrell Davis and he gave one of those big exhales like Woo, boy this is this is fun but I'm getting a little <laughs> tired. That mouthpiece doesn't leave you a lot of room to breathe either. Second down and seven. Elway throws. He's got Smith. It's incomplete as it ricochets off his palms. Sean Springs was covering. Near the end of the third quarter here, let's go back to our CBS studios in New York with an update. Here's Jim Nance. Hey, Kevin, how about this stat? On the year, San Diego's quarterbacks, Wheelahan and Leaf, nine touchdown passes, 33 interceptions. Wheelahan today has been picked three times, all three by Kwame Lasseter, and the Cardinals maintain a seven-point lead with seven minutes to go third quarter. Let's go back to Denver. Jim, that's nothing. We saw them a couple weeks ago against the Seattle defense, and they were picked off seven times. Hey, don't you yell at Jim Nance. <laughs> it's third down and seven. L.A. fires a pass, and it's caught for a first down. Great catch made by Rod Smith. He's had a super day. He picks up eight, and they move the chains. You can see everybody up around the line of scrimmage. A perfect lane out here to throw into. Nobody underneath. That's because they're all up trying to stop the run. The Denver Broncos have figured that one out pretty quick. They're going to try to make them honest again on the other side of the ball, and then they'll go back to the run. Eight catches today for Smith, tying a career high. He now has 85 catches on the season. First and 10 from the 35. Davis, a block from Griffin, and there he goes. And again, he's put down from behind. Chad Brown got him around the shoestrings. You, oh, you, you can close your eyes and just listen to the crowd to see what's going on. He was one step away that time. Chad Brown saved it. He's zeroing in on 2,000. Elway has thrown three touchdown passes. That's the end of the third quarter. Broncos 21, Seahawks 7. We'll return to Mile High Stadium after this message and a word from your local CBS station. Tuesday. I've never felt this safe before. Kevin Costner and Whitney Houston. The Bodyguard CBS Tuesday. The address is CBS. Welcome home. On your marks. Get set. Is this how it feels at the airport gate? United Airlines now has faster computers at our gates to get you on board and on your way a little quicker. It's one more way United is rising. There's a celebration going on at your Jeep dealer. It's the Jeep Awards event, honoring the all-new Grand Cherokee Limited, named 4x4 of the year and four-wheeler of the year. So we're celebrating with a special zero down, 374 a month lease on the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo with 869 due at signing. Hey, deals like this don't just fall out of the sky. So hurry in before January 4th when this great celebration ends. Check one out at your Jeep dealer. I'm Todd! And I'm Justin! And, and this is a wrap! The Denver Post asked us to teach everyone some basic referee stuff. This means timeout. This means touchdown Broncos. You may even see the ref do this. The Post is number one, bro. They're giving away 100 tickets to every Broncos playoff game. Broncos rule. Post rules. And this means stop and enter to win playoff tickets. The official newspaper of the fan is giving away 100 tickets to every Broncos playoff game. Pick up the Post at newsstands everywhere for entry forms. Get your tickets now for First Night Colorado. Mike Shanahan is 29-2 and two as a head coach at home since he's been here. We begin the fourth quarter, second down and two. Handoff to Davis. And he may have submarined uh, for the first down. He's very close. Michael Sinclair to Sean Miles make the tackle. He now needs 35 yards for 2,000. And you know that Mike Shanahan wants to get this to uh, him as quickly as he can and get it over with because every time he hands in the ball he exposes him to the chance of an injury same with Elway or Sharp or McCaffrey any of these guys 
the tightrope that Mike Shanahan has to walk now is to get this thing done, get the win over with, and don't get anybody hurt. Davis gets the first down. McCaffrey's in motion. Here goes Elway with time. Second option is the fullback Griffith. One on one with the rookie Simmons, and out of bounds he goes. Visit the NFL online and get ready for the wild card games with playoff previews and video clips from historical postseason matchups at NFL.com or on America Online at keyword Team NFL. On that a little bit, I was looking your name up the other day on NFL.com. Were you really? Yeah, you're, you're listed under also participating in the league. So. <laughs> what does that mean? I mean, I've seen your name on there many times. Yeah, I'm on that, on that list. Don't go there list. <laughs> Second down six, a fake by Elway, chased by Labonte, gets by Labonte and throws a pass. It's caught by Rex with the down. He's at the Seattle 70, picks up 12. He's put in a career day today against the Seattle defense. First and goal, Denver. Well, I'll tell you what, fake this way, rolls this way, and Mike Shanahan has everybody fooled on the Seattle because they're looking for the ball being handed to Terrell Davis, as were we, and that's two throws in a row, two passes in a row. And they're open down the field because everybody's up so tight playing the run. From the seven yard line, first and goal. Big handoff, here goes Elway, finds an opening, gets by the defense. Look at the time he's got, here comes Brown, there goes the pass, touchdown! Flags are on the field, Rod Smith made the catch. I cannot believe Rod Smith even came back and he was four or five, or three or four yards out of bounds at the end line. He knew he was ineligible. All he was doing is running the risk of a penalty. The effect, though, it's going to push him back, and that gives more yardage for Terrell Davis to run to gain. Illegal touching of the ball by the offense, number 80, went out of bounds, came back in first to, cut, to touch the ball, the five-yard penalty, still first down. The rule is, he, watch right, here he is up here at the top. He's going to go out of bounds, way out of bounds. He's in the white there. That's six feet of white. Look at the top of the screen. Right up here, you can see him. Now, here he goes, out of bounds. Okay, he cannot be the next person to touch the ball. He can touch it after maybe a deflection or something. Springs gave him a pretty good shot. Springs a good defensive back. Second and goal from the 13-yard line. Davis is in. He gets the call. He gets a block from Jones, and he's inside the 10 with a gain of three and tackled on the play by Phillip Daniels. You know, if they choose to give the ball to Terrell Davis here, the effect of that penalty is it adds five more yards to the total running rushing yardage of Terrell Davis. When they were throwing the ball, what they were doing really was subtracting potential yards that he might gain. Terrell Davis, though, using him wisely, there's still plenty of time for him to mix the run in the pass. He's got 139 yards. He needs 31. 31 to go. Second down and goal. Good block by Davis on Sinclair, but here comes Sinclair, and he's on Elway, and down he goes. The pass is away. It's incomplete. And you see the Seattle Seahawks now getting that second win. They don't want any part of this record. They told us last night. At the same time, Denver is doing a terrific job of mixing things up and not just going to run, run, run to try to get that 2,000 yards right away. And if I'm a coach for the Denver Broncos or a fan, I'm saying please don't come down wrong on that knee or that ankle when you're sacked or tackled like that. Or the back or the ribs or the shoulder yeah, or the knee and right on down the line. They're all freak injuries at that point. And Elway has burned one of his timeouts. The first timeout taken in the second half with 12 20 to play. He was inspired by the romance and ritual, the way people came together over dark roasted coffee. Today, one man's tribute to the Italian coffee bar has created one of the fastest growing companies in America. And with thousands of employee shareholders, Starbucks is bringing neighborhoods together around the world. Where do you learn about companies with the drive to invigorate entire industries? Exactly. NASDAQ Amex, the market of markets. Because of our passion for design and engineering, our vehicles speak for themselves. And recently, others have had some great things to say about our quality, too. Sebring Convertible, Total Quality Award. Town & Country, Total Quality Award. Cirrus, Best in Class in Initial Quality by J.D. Power & Associates. Concord, Best in Class in Initial Quality by J.D. Power & Associates. 
Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. Extreme stress, searing heat. No one can break down a motor oil faster than a police force. That's why police forces around the country use Castrol GTX, the only leading 10W30 that provides maximum protection against both viscosity and thermal breakdown. Because some people have more important things to worry about than motor oil. Castrol GTX. Drive hard. Kevin James knows it's okay to binge during the holidays, but be grateful you're not the king of queens. Look at me, I look like I'm in my 12th trimester. Right after Cosby, CBS Monday. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the NASDAQ MX Market Group, the market of markets, and by Castro GTX Drive Hard. John Elway has thrown for over 310 yards today, his 36th career 300-yard game. And he owns not only this stadium, this town, this state, they love it here. And it's third and goal from the 10. 15th play of the Denver Drive. Elway on a block, has the receiver. It's caught by Willie Green at the 1. Now it's fourth down and goal inside the one. Green with his second catch of the day, and Elway was right on the money. Watch this late throw. The ball's going to be thrown off his right. He's not going to hop over the top. See, he kind of throw it sidearm, but he throws it right at the corner. Nobody could get to. Oh, it looked like. Let's see if he gets both feet in that time. Goes to his right, secondary receiver. You saw him looking left at the beginning. Willie Green, one, two. He gets both feet in. Good call. Both officials right there on that one, too. It's fourth down, goal inside the Seattle one. Davis in the backfield, big handoff. Here comes Elway, throwing a touchdown pass to Seven Shot. <laughs> Sell it that way, and here comes Elway out the other side. Now he's just going to make somebody commit. Michael Sinclair trying to cover. Not going to happen. Shannon Sharp in the corner. And here in Denver, you not only kiss pretty girls, but you can kiss a horse. <laughs> you can kiss the horse. You and Shannon Sharp. <laughs> you run with the extra point. Shannon Sharp has just passed Kellen Winslow for third place all time in receiving yards by a tight end. His second touchdown catch of the day right there. The Broncos are looking at the Colts. Okay, you probably think they look alike. But with Gateway, you get basic help over the phone for as long as you own it. After a month, you pay for it. Here, you get a color printer. Nope, not here. This one you can trade in toward the purchase of a new one after two years. Yours forever. Still think they look alike? We'll build you a PC like this one for $1,598 or $45 a month. Call 1-800-GATEWAY and get more out of the box. Introducing the new Nicotrol Inhaler. Now available by prescription. Ask your doctor if it's right for you. For more information, visit our website or call 1-800-INHALER. just tastes better. This Super Bowl Sunday, the Prize Patrol could surprise you with $31 million. Hey, Todd, can you give me a hand? The one and only Publisher's Clearinghouse Sweepstakes. Uh, now, the self-service for the birds. Bigger than ever. Uh. Broncos, 49ers, Cowboys. America's team is back when the Magnificent Seven returns CBS Friday, January 8th. Three quarterbacks in the history of the NFL have thrown 300 touchdown passes. Fran Tarkenton, Dan Marino, and now John Elway. Kickoff by Elam. Kerry Joseph from the five. He's going to throw the other way. 
where it's caught and run up field by Robert Wilson, a reserve wide receiver. And he's out of bounds at about the 30. John Elway and the defending champion Broncos lead at 28-7. It's the end of the year, and now you can get some of the best deals of the year on Nissan cars and trucks during Nissan's holiday sales event. Like $2,000 cash back on 99 Maximas, the best-selling import V6 sedan in America. And get $2,500 cash back on tough and rugged 99 Pathfinders. Plus, now through January 4th, Nissan's giving you an additional $500 off on virtually every 99 Nissan. Hurry in for best selection, because with deals like this, they're gonna go fast. Waterburn, Australia, a true story. A man was prospecting behind his trailer home when he discovered a 61-pound nugget of solid gold worth $1 million. When it comes to retirement, you can depend on luck or you can depend on us, Sun America. We specialize in retirement investments. Ask about our personal retirement portfolios and don't leave your future to chance. Sun America, the retirement specialist. are quitting smoking than ever and a lot of them are doing it with nicoderm cq cq's got the three steps the gradual step down method doctors prefer to help get you free so how many have quit with nicoderm cq why we'd have to build the biggest stadium in america just to hold them all remember now new year's day quit with nicoderm cq we're saving a seat for you Double up on Holiday Hoops. First, an ACC collision with Clemson and North Carolina. Then Louisville meets Michigan State. The road to the Final Four next Saturday on CBS. John Elway, four touchdown passes. The Broncos have known for the last month they're going to be in the playoffs, but now they look ready for the playoffs. They've got the edge back, Kevin. From the 31st and 10, John Kitna winds up. He's got Galloway, and he drops it again. Galloway has dropped four passes today. It's second down and 10. Going up against Tyrone Braxton. Oh, well, excuse me, not Tyrone, it's Ray Crockett right down the sideline. Did not step out of bounds. The ball is dying as it reaches him, just as it overextend. You know, you've got to run through the ball when you get out there like that as a receiver. You can't rely on your hands because the ball is falling almost straight down as it comes in. Second down and 10 from the 30-yard line. Kitna hesitates, then throws to Brian Blades. He drops it. It's incomplete. This could be... The last time we see Blades, who has spent 11 years in a Seattle uniform, playing for Seattle, only player left from the last time Seattle won a playoff berth back in 1988. Could be his last season. Playing for the minimum already, he thought he was positive this team would make the playoffs. Joey Galloway said he's the most important person to Joey Galloway's development. He's a valuable player. It's third and ten. Seattle has missed their last six third down tries. Getting a throws, caught by Pritchard, and he's caught by the Broncos. No place to run, no place to hide. Darius Johnson was there, and Seattle must punt again. Denver becomes the sixth team to score 500 points or more in one season. Minnesota, of course, set a record this year, 556. Beating the old Washington Redskins of 83, and Joe Gibbs. Feagles to punt again. George Coghill on the 20-yard line. Got a block from Crockett and Torrey James, and he's up to the 27. 50-yard punt by Feagles, a nine-yard return. So we'll see John Elway, and we'll see Terrell Davis. We are on the brink of history at Mile High.
For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. Johnson, I'd like to see some ideas on saving the company money. I'll be back first thing in the morning. Well, Johnson, Staples, that'll save us a lot of money. You are a genius. For all the supplies you need at guaranteed low prices, it's Staples, plus free delivery. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fit you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. And by Staples, the office superstore. Broncos lead at 28 to 7. Terrell Davis needs 31 yards for 2,000. And they've got 72 yards to go for a touchdown. Davis gets the handoff, and Davis up the middle for a game of five to the 38. Tackled on the play by Anthony Simmons. And as the crowd was chanting TD for Terrell Davis, the ball goes. Now look at him bend back. That's vision. That's what the, the Seattle Seahawks told us last night. You fill the gaps, he baits you into the gap, and then breaks away from you. Chance of TD, TD. And he's playing with bad ribs and a bad back. He's not comfortable, but he only needs 23 more yards. Second down to Davis again. He's got the first down, slithering to the 48. I'll bet you. Terrell Davis can't tell you what's hurting right now, if anything. Look at that up front blocking. That offensive line is doing everything they can to give him their good run and start. Spin back again. He started to his left, bends back to the right. Jones, Slareth, Nalen, Neal, Swain, all of them have a part of it. First and ten. Davis again. He spurts down to the 48, picking up four. Brings it to 19 by my count. And a Seahawk is down. Matt Labonte, who made the tackle on Davis moments ago. Take it back, it's Anthony Simmons. The young rookie. Well, I guess all rookies are young, aren't they? Fast, speedy linebacker. Well, Monday on CBS, more and more people are discovering that everybody loves Raymond. He is the funniest show on television. Find out why, Monday at 9, 8 Central, right here on CBS. They'll bring in Hillary Butler and leaving the field under his own power, rookie Anthony Simmons. Seven yards. I'm guessing Raymond is sitting at home watching this one just as we are. And this crowd is on their, they are on their feet. Second down and six from the 47. Davis breaks a tackle. He's got it. He's got 2,000. Simpson did it in 73. Eric Dickerson did it in 85. Barry Sanders in 97. And minutes ago, Terrell Davis accomplished the feat in 1998. 2,007 yards for Terrell Davis. 
Neil Smith had the ball, took it out there to him, but every player on that team wants to congratulate. And every player on that team's a part of this. They've all been working just as hard to give him a chance to break 2,000 yards. LaVille is in the game from the 33, and LaVille gets the call. On first down, picks up a meager yard. And I imagine we're going to see uh, Terrell Davis in that familiar spot the rest of the afternoon. No sense in doing anything now. You mentioned earlier about the injuries are always such a, a tightrope that you walk as a coach when you've got a milestone like that to reach. Maybe this for the Broncos who have found this season fairly simple up until the last couple of weeks needed this kind of a rallying cry to get them out back on track and ready for their January 9th game here in the playoffs. Second down and 10. Elway deep with Smith and his target. Incomplete at the six, working on Willie Williams. Now it's true, Monday night football is coming to a close, but you can still find all the excitement without halftime here on CBS. It's the best comedy lineup on TV. Cosby, King of Queens. Everybody loves Raymond and Becker. That's Monday on CBS. Terrell Davis could probably get his 30-minute uh, sitcom right in between that lineup. Terrific show today, that's for sure. It's third and ten. They blitz Elway. With time for Smith again. He's got room to catch it. That one is broken up by Fred Thomas. Incomplete. Help from Kerry Joseph, number 40. John Elway and Rod Smith are trying to get one more in that left corner. This is a straight drop back, full protection. See five linemen and two backs, seven blockers. One on one down the field. Safety coming, but not there in time. Good play by Fred Thomas. It's fourth down and 10. And the Broncos have called timeout. Interestingly, Jason Elam has missed two field goals today. Do you let him kick it here? Or do you go for it? Timeout. This is a message for Leanne Daly, card member since 92. Just a reminder, when you have an unusually large expense to settle, nothing quite fits the bill like the no preset spending power of American Express. It... No. Yet another reason to do more with the American Express card. Okay, I'll be back on Tuesday. The number's are on the fridge. I color-coded all your meals so you won't be confused. The blue one is a beef dish. B is for beef. The pink one's a pork dish. P is for pork. You get the idea. The green one is for vegetables. It should be violet for vegetables. But I thought you might see violet but think purple and interpret pork, which would defeat the whole purpose of convenient color-coding altogether. Four minutes on high. Stir halfway. Bye, guys. So what do you guys want for dinner? Blue or pink? Did somebody say McDonald's? I hope Mom color-coded breakfast, too. This young man is about to save a life. Would you know what to do? If you arrive first, have someone go for help. Don't move, don't move, don't move. Hey, you guys, call for help. Then, to reduce the risk of fire, turn off the car's engine. Don't take chances if a car is burning. And never move a victim unless it's absolutely necessary. Learn more in this free book from Shell. Count on Shell. This is the Great American Race. Dale Earnhardt finally is a champion of the Daytona 500. The Daytona 500 is on CBS. There's Jason Elam, who has missed two field goals today already, one last week in Miami. His confidence at an all-time low. With the playoffs coming up and a 51-yarder staring him in the face, they're going to go for it on fourth and ten. It's clearly one option would be to put him out there because the placement to, on this play would be 51 yards as well. They choose to go for it with Elway. It's fourth and ten. There goes a flag. Free down for Denver. Elway being chased by LaBounty. He gets away from Chad Brown. He's still on his feet and wisely runs out of bounds at the 31. Flags all over the field. We may see the field goal now, though. Five yards closer. Fourth down will uh, still be fourth down. But they obviously need Elam in the playoffs. He's been outstanding all Offside. season long. The right end defense. 
Five yard penalty, still fourth down. It's an interesting little decision that Shanahan had to make. Well, it is, and I'm surprised, you know, the special teams coach didn't run up there and say, hey, here's our chance. Let's let Jason go out there and try one from long range, 51 yards, and that'd be about 46 yarder. But uh, they're not going for it here. Fourth down and five, they're going to try it again. What would you do? I, I think I you brought it up, but I agree with you. I think the field goal is a good cap to the season and a nice launch into the playoffs. John Elway's going to try to draw them off sides one more time. It's fourth down from the shotgun. Elway fires a pass inside, which is dropped by Rod Smith, covered by Fred Thomas, and on downs, Denver turns it over to Seattle. And a little shoving and pushing here by some of the interior linemen. You know, you, you did. It's an interesting point. Jason Elam has missed one today for 51 yards. A couple last week. Would have been a chance to get that confidence back. We'll never know. Timeout. Did we rent with Hertz number one club gold? Did we rent with Hertz number one club gold? Did we rent with Hertz? Not exactly. Can't we skip the rental counter like it hurts? Can't we skip Can't the we rental skip counter? Uh, no, not exactly. No. Isn't our car under a canopy like it hurts? Isn't our car under a canopy? Isn't our car? No. In rent a car, there's Hertz and there's not exactly. We can't repeat that too often. If you were the client, would you, you hire us? Would you hire us? If you were the client, would you? Not exactly. Give your customers the help they need whenever they need it with a self-service website by IBM. Where in the world should you be investing now? There's opportunity all around the globe. Overseas markets can be rewarding, but there are always risks. You need a guide who knows the way. If you want to invest in foreign markets, you have to be in those markets, and potential's there. We think our global research capability gives our investors a real advantage. Find Prudential's investment know-how all around the world and right around the corner. <gasps> Can Ray handle spending one night in his brother's room? Hey, could you, uh, put a shirt on? Everybody loves Raymond. And some underpants. CBS Monday. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Hertz. Nobody does it exactly like Hertz. And by IBM. Are you ready for e-business? Dusk in the Rockies. 2,000 yards, over 2,000 yards for Terrell Davis today. Seattle gets a bet. At the 28 and trailing, 28 to 7. John Kittner to the air. Got a block, moves up, hit as he throws by Tanabasa, and it's incomplete. Romanowski just about had it. Well, this season has been a disaster because they loaded up on free agents for the second consecutive year. They began the season 3-0 for Dennis Erickson. They've got the number four payroll in the NFL, and they've been eliminated from the playoffs for the 10th consecutive season. They've got a terrific defense, a lot of big stats, lead the league in sacks. Interceptions, a lot of returns for touchdowns. So they've got a lot of things in place right here, but the speculation is that a change might be made simply because they didn't make the playoffs. They'll point to that Testaverde non-touchdown call and all those kind of things, but it's only speculation at this point, but we have to bring it up that this is a real... 93 defense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Especially, Sam, when you look at what Atlanta did, going from 7-9 to 14-2. and two. Minnesota from 9-7 and seven to 15-1. and one. Buffalo from 6 and 10 to 10 and 6 in Detroit. You know, struggling the way they have. These are teams that have made the change in the past, but unfortunately not for Seattle. Catch made by Christian Fourier. Now you played tight end to Colorado. You know, talking to Dennis Erickson last night, you can see the strain that uh, that he's going through because he know he hears these things. There's no way as a coach that you don't know these conversations are going on. At the same time, you've got to get the team ready. To his credit, this team has played hard for him all the way down. Coming from behind last week to win, they've played well here today against just a better football team. First down up to the 44-yard line for Kitna. Down the middle, Fourier again is open. 
He's inside the Denver 33 in a gain of 24, tackled by Coghill. Friday, January 8th, the adventure is back when the Magnificent Seven returns with all new episodes. Don't miss the drama, the action, and the romance. The Magnificent Seven premieres Friday, January 8th on CBS. First down for Seattle inside the 33. Here comes the blitz on kick. Throws it outside, and the attempt by Waters trickles off his fingertips. Romanowski was there. Just a couple of inches away from a in-stride catch by a Ricky Waters, and he would have been one-on-one -on -one in the open field. Good read by John Kidd. I'll tell you, this guy is an exciting prospect in the National Football League. He's got uh, quick reads. He's got a quick release. He's elusive. He does understand, as he told us last night, he does understand defense as we've seen him react the right way too many times today. He took the place of the demoted Warren Moon at the end of November. Second down, 10 from the 32. Kittner moves up, hit by Price, throws a pass, incomplete. There goes a flag, it's off the fingertips of Galloway. But flags litter the field at the two yard line. Gordon was there, 21. Gary Gordon got there too early that time on the inside move. Galloway going to the inside, outside technique by Gordon. Now you're gonna see contact here. No, excuse me, it's picked up right at the last minute there by number 27 it is. Steve Atwater, 21 it is. And just there too early, that is Darian Gordon. And he got it. It's first and goal from the seven. Kitna to the end zone, caught for a touchdown by Pritchard. A little step and go on the outside by Pritchard. Ball, it's a timing throw. You don't can't wait very long because you don't have much in zone, in zone to wait on. Darius Johnson is beat. He's playing way inside, looking for a slant, obviously. See how far outside Pritchard got on Johnson. That the secondary of Denver, he'd seen that number 85. 85 Lamar Thomas for Miami last week burned him for three touchdowns. The secondary of the Broncos has been taking a lot of heat as the extra point is up and in by Peterson. Right now, let's go back to CBS in New York and Jim Nance. All right, the San Diego drive here, Kevin, stalls inside the 10. It leads to a Carney field goal from 26 yards. Tampa Bay's hopes are still alive as the Chargers are within seven with 9.46 remaining. Let's go back to you. Well, Arizona has been involved in so many close games. In fact, the last three decided on the last play of the game. Field goals, all of them. Jake Plummer, though, is a quarterback that plays without any fear. You know, it's almost like I don't know what's at stake. I don't have the pressure of, uh, of crucial plays in the back of my mind. He's just a fun guy to watch, comparing a lot of people do to Joe Montana. And I had a, the pleasure of coaching for four years, and I see the similarities, too. John Kidd is another one. We could be seeing a, a lot of young players coming on the scene Right now, with Peyton Manning and Ryan Leaf will develop as time goes on, John Kidney being one of them. Coming Wednesday, January 13th, join Dan Rather, Bob Simon, Vicki Mabry, and Charlie Rose for 60 Minutes 2, the new Wednesday edition of Sunday Tradition. Coming Wednesday, January 13th, on CBS. Denver playing for the onside kick. And Peterson boots it long. Hebron back at the eight. And tackled by Kerry Joseph, number 40. So now we're going to see Elway, although Bubby Brister was on the sideline warming up. Elway will go back in. Well, it's 28 to 14. You know, we've been talking about the 2,000 yards, and, and Denver has pretty well controlled the second half. But stranger things have happened here with five minutes, 49 seconds left. A quick turnover or a three and out, and Seattle could get right back in this one. But Davis is not in. 
Lavelle is, and Lavelle gets the call. Detron Smith with the lead block. And he is brought down at the 24-yard line after a gain of one. The ASC playoff picture one more time. New England will visit Jacksonville. Buffalo will go to Miami. That's the first round next weekend. And of course, the home fee or the buys by the New York Jets, they'll play the winner of the New England Jacksonville game, and Denver will play the winner here in Mile High of the Miami Buffalo. But the lower seed, of course. Denver is the gets the number one spot in all of this seeding because of their record. Second down and nine. And off goes again to Lavelle with nothing there. Tackle made by Deshaun Miles, a rookie. In the NFC playoff picture, with one place still open here, Arizona or Tampa Bay will go to Dallas. If Green Bay and San Francisco will play each other, and if it depends uh, later today, we'll know where they'll play that ball game. The winner of the Dallas Arizona Tampa Bay game will play in Atlanta, and Minnesota will host either Green Bay or San Francisco. You know, something that probably should be brought up now is that this may be the last regular season home game for John Elway. He announced back in June he would return, but he said he was motivated not only because he felt he had a good team, but for the 50,000-yard passing mark that he has since gone by and joined Dan Marino and that illustrious group. But that influenced his decision, but when you think long-term, will he come back next year? Well, I tell you, you know, last year he thought long and hard about it, spent a lot of time with his family. I'm sure he's going to do the same thing again. Broke another record today, you know, 300 touchdown passes today. Only two other quarterbacks have done it, Marino and Tarkington. But he's got so many things going for him in this town and other business interests. It, it's an easy transition for him when he decides to do it, and it'll be his decision. I don't think anybody's going to go to him. It's third and ten for Elway. Winds up and throws a pass, and it's caught by Byron Chamberlain. His first catch in 14 games is good for 16 and a Denver first down. And Denver knows that they need to still make some first downs right here. Just going to break to the outside. It's a zone defense, inside technique, outside technique, and of course the safety coming up from the from the uh, deep corner. Kerry Joseph makes the tackle. Denver knows that they need to make a couple more first downs to make sure that there's no time left for some kind of miracle comeback by the Seattle Seahawks. Denver out of timeout. Seattle has two. First down to the 39-yard line for the Broncos. And Derek Laville sledgehammers his way up to the 45. Gain of six. Next Sunday, playoff action begins with the AFC wild card game here on CBS. The Patriots travel to Jacksonville. Jaguars, the AFC Central Division champions. Next Sunday, right here on CBS. Well, this is a, that's a battle of two beat-up football teams, injured football teams. Tough place to win in Jacksonville if you're the visiting team. If Mark Brunel is back and healthy and ready to go, then I give the edge on that one to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Second down four. Smith in motion. LaBelle gets the handoff. Deeks his way close to a first down. Well, they've got the second unit in the backfield with Lavelle and Detron Smith. As you see, Arizona still holding on with eight and a half to play against San Diego. By the way, the Chargers coming in with one of the best defenses all season long in the NFL. Well, they've been terrific. The only thing missing in San Diego this year was a veteran quarterback to bring Ryan Leaf along or Craig Wheelahan along. But they've had a, they've been able to keep in keep themselves in the ball game because of that strong defense. Green Bay wins. San Francisco is winning. The Packers will go to San Francisco. Atlanta. I don't know what to think about Atlanta. 14 and two. Tony Martin, the next San Diego Charger receiver, three receptions there. Buffalo with Rob Johnson starting at quarterback, not Doug Flutie, goes to 10 and six as they snuff out Mike Ditka and the New Orleans Saints. Well, Atlanta's for real. They're, they're a football team that's uh, beaten too many good football clubs not to be. Carolina came from behind to beat Peyton Manning and the Colts. It's third and one. Lavelle, Chad Brown comes through to make the tackle. He's had a great season. And Seattle takes their second timeout in a row. They're still fighting to stay in this thing. Quick score, 320 left. They have one timeout left. 
And that was Seattle's last time up. Well, that was their last one. Now they've got to score, and then they will see if they do an onside kick. This thing's not over yet. That's why you saw John Elway put the ball down the field. Denver Broncos understand how unforgiving this game can be. But with this lead at this stage, would you have put in Boomer Esiason or would you have put in Turk Shonen? <laughs> Who would you have put it? Well, neither one of them play for the Broncos, so that's a tough, you know, a trick question. But I'm talking when you took your team to the Super Bowl in 88. I, I you know, I, I just love Turk Schoenner so much that I would have put Turk in there. <laughs> Boomer would have fought tooth and nail. He wouldn't want to come out of the ball game. We had a few of those on the sideline discussions. Here's Tom Ruin. Kerry Joseph is back from the 15. And up to the 27-yard line. Hit by Dwayne Carswell. Seattle came with the all-out rush on the punt. Line drive punt. They got field position. So now the oh boy. 311 remains in the game. We look at the famed no huddle. In this great season is already over. It, it hadn't been fun. And let me just tell you, I'll echo that one. It's the way it should be. It has been a great year. How about, how about this official down here at the bottom of the pile? <laughs> been a lot of scratching and clawing going on this year, but it has been a lot of fun. First and ten, Kittner. Good block thrown by Waters, but the flags are down, and so too is John Kittner with Darius Johnson making the sack. But the flags may dictate a face mask, and indeed they do. And I would imagine this is a 15-yarder because he held on to it and took John Kittner all the way down with that face mask. See what they call. They'll discuss this not only where it happened, but the intensity First of it. First fall, grabbing and pulling on the face mask. 25 defense, 15 yard penalty, first down. We're not just the garden variety either, the big baby. Here he is coming from this side. He jumps, pulls it down. There's the grip. Now, if he lets go right now, he probably only gets five. You see, he holds on as long as that head's pulled down close to the chest. That long, they're going to give you 15. Just to wrap up the Terrell Davis story from today, officially 2,008 yards for the season on what was a terrific day rushing the ball. It's first and 10 for Kitna with the deep drop. It's incomplete. Romanowski was covering. Well, for those of you expecting to see 60 minutes, you're watching the NFL on CBS. And the game between Seattle and Denver. I'm Kevin Harlan along with Sam Weish. Broncos lead the Seahawks 28-14 on four Elway touchdown passes. And a reminder, 60 minutes will be seen in its entirety immediately following this game except on the West Coast and the Mountain Time Zone. Second down and 10. John Kidna was trying to draw him off sides, but one of his linemen moved a little bit too early for him. Looked like it was Walter Jones. Officials will decide who moved first. The defense could be charged with that if they forced a quick movement by the offense. Encroachment, 93 defense, five yard penalty. With, with the Broncos right now leading by two touchdowns, if they go on to win, they will finish the AFC West portion of their schedule 8 0. First time they've ever gone undefeated in the division. And with the win, they'll go to their 14th victory of the season. That would set a franchise record for one year victories. And I told Mike Shanahan yesterday, we were chatting about the ball game, and I said, I, I can't tell you how much I admire the job you've done. It's tougher winning the year after you've won a Super Bowl than any other time. Second and five. Hasselback is chasing Kittens. So is Tanavasa. And the pass is caught at the 49 by Mike Pritchard. It's a gain of 12. And good for a first down. Well, I tell you, these two teams do not like each other very much. I don't think the Seattle Seahawks like being in the record book as the team that uh, Terrell Davis passed 2,000 yards against. First down for Seattle. No timeouts remaining. Downfield, Fourier with a great leaping catch at the 33 over Atwater. He picks up 19 on other Seattle first down. Seattle hadn't conceded this with 2.21 left. They'll have, they can't stop the five with a timeout, but the two-minute warning will do it. Kidna has engineered two come-from-behind wins already this year. Quick pass caught by Pritchard. Atwater with a nice open field tackle, and a flag is downfield at the six. 
That one came from way in the backfield. Usually where defensive holding comes from. Or where the defensive holding flag uh, is thrown. Officials now are lining up for a discussion. Usually they're in a circle. This time they're in a straight line. You'd like to see the players stay away from the oh, officials yeah. when they're discussing things. There is no penalty. There is 11 men on the field. No penalty. Okay. They thought they had too many men on the field. Yeah, I think next year it'd be a good rule that if any time the officials are in a discussion, they're having a, a powwow, anybody, any player that comes into the uh, area there be penalized five yards. Same thing with a fumble. Anybody that enters the fumble pile late, five-yard penalty. All you're doing is stealing the ball underneath that pile. Reach the two-minute warning, and so they stop the clock there. Seattle and Denver both out of timeout. The two-minute warning. Broncos by two touchdowns. Hey, Johnny. There's a new Chunky Soup, Sweetie Pie. Hey, Chunky Did you just call me Sweetie Pie? Oh, no. Caught sweaty Guy. There's a new Chunky Soup, Sweaty Guy. Chunky Baked Potato with cheddar and bacon bits. A hearty soup loaded with big chunks of baked potato to fill my little Johnny Bear, right? Mom! Got to make sure you're eating good. How long you been wearing this? Since the half. <laughs> New Campbell's Chunky Baked Potato Soups. They fill you up right. Introducing the new Nicotrol Inhaler. Now available by prescription. Ask your doctor if it's right for you. For more information, visit our website or call 1-800-INHALER. Do you, uh, Yahoo? Hi, Tom Bodette. Well, this is what I looked like back when I was new. And this is a new room at Motel 6. When I was new, a new room at Motel 6. Cute, huh? I'm Tom Bodette, and we'll leave the light on for you. If you're a hospital corporation and you're cooking the books to put one over on Medicare, he is the last guy you want looking over your shoulder. 60 Minutes, tonight. Wild card playoff game next week. The New England Patriots take on Jacksonville on the coverage on CBS begins at 12 Eastern time with Jim Nansing crew from New York. And then Greg Gumbel and Phil Sims from Arlton Stadium in Jacksonville. Second down and four from the 27 with a two minute warning. No timeouts for Kitna. Who will loop it deep and it is caught. Great catch made by Brian Blades for 16 yards. And why not in what might be his final game for the Seattle Seahawks. What a pretty pass from John Kitna. Just threw it out there in the hole. There's a zone defense by the Denver Broncos. He just dropped it in there and Blades got to it. Right in the corner. Both knees are down in bounds. You don't have to have both feet in bounds. Both knees will do. The Seahawks can make a first down, first and ten from the 11. Kitna, great time, good block by Gray, chased by Tanavasa, throws to Foy, and out of bounds he goes. With no gain on the play. Tonight on CBS, if you're a hospital corporation and you're cooking the books to put one over on Medicare, this is the last guy you want looking over your shoulder. 60 minutes tonight. Then a mysterious man poses as the angel of death untouched by an angel. Followed by the CBS Sunday movie Final Descent, a thriller starring Robert Urich about a jumbo jet that can't land. That's all tonight on CBS. Second down and ten. Bill Romanowski having a few words after that hit. And Christian Poirier. Flag is thrown. They stop that one. That means illegal movement or contact by the defense. One of the two when they stop the play. Ball start, 68 offense. Five yard penalty, still second down. Brian Lee, yeah, the ex Bronco. Illegal movement. You can't start before the ball comes up. And in a situation like this, you can't hear the snap count. You're just trying to anticipate it. The crowd, even though a lot of them have left, 
They're still making a lot of noise. One of the noisiest stadiums in the NFL. Second down, 15 with the penalty. Back at the 16-yard line. Kittner with time. Into the end zone. Pass is caught at the one. What a catch made by Mike Pritchard. 15-yard grab. And he had to get every inch out of that one. Lots going on here. Protection is first. John Kittner buying time and not losing his vision down the field. And then this catch. One foot. I'm not going to have any comment, Kevin. I'll just leave this to you. What do you think? Well, he got the first down. It really doesn't matter what I think. <laughs> well, let's watch it again. One, I think what? he got them both in. First and goal. Deems May in motion. Ricky Waters. He wants to throw, and he does. Caught by Deems May. A one-yard touchdown pass by Ricky Waters. May's first touchdown catch of the year. And he's playing with a broken hand. And I'll tell you, Bill Romanowski is just a, just a word away from getting a 15-yard penalty, which his team does not need right now. Good call by Seattle because they were Denver was playing the run all the way, and it was a late throw. Most of the time, that pass shows so early that it's never open. Bill Romanowski, though, has been joined across the ball all almost all of this drive he needs to calm down a little bit doesn't want to get a cheap penalty now Peterson with the extra point good hold put down by Jeff Fiegel's the putter it's a seven point game engineered by number seven John Kittner let's go to CBS in New York and Jim Ames. All right, hold on for a minute. Down in Arizona, Tampa Bay fans watching closely. Wheel a hand to Ryan Thilwell, down seven, and he drops the football, and it's picked up by Kwame Lasseter, his fourth interception of the day. 325 remaining now, and Arizona has the football. Back to you. Thelwell was on the San Diego practice squad after being let go by San Francisco and the kid they really liked down in San Diego. Well, I'll tell you what. There are some things that are just out of your control. If you're sitting down in Tampa and a Tampa Bay Buccaneer fan, of course you're pulling for San Diego in this ball game, and you can't do anything about it except cheer loud in front of your TV set. Cardinals were last in the playoffs in the strike-shortened 82 season when they went up to Lambeau Field and played the Green Bay Packers. They were five and four. They're going to get another shot at it. I'll tell you, one of the disadvantages for Arizona and Atlanta going into this is the fact they haven't been in this play in the playoffs in recent time. And now here's the play of this ball game. An onside kick by the San by uh, Seattle. Denver ready for it. Onside kick by Peterson. Caught beautifully by Byron Chamberlain. A reserve tight end who caught a pass earlier in the second half. His first catch in 14 games. And a flag is down at the 35. You know, you put guys on that line, that, that onside kick receiving team, they have good hands but are big like tight ends because they're going to take a shot every now and then. Oh. Denver. Offside. That means five yards up and they'll do it again. This one's not over. Offside, 89 of the receiving team. Five-yard penalty re-kick. 86 Chamberlain made the catch 89 Carswell was next to him. Here's the kick you see right there right here just stepped over the line. It looked like to me the penalty is going to be called against Derek Lovell. And his toe on the line at the ball and the ball's kicked. Try it again Peterson this one is caught as well. Derek Lavelle. No timeouts for either team. Minute and a half to play in this one. Update on the San Diego Arizona game with Jim Nance. Well, actually, we're going to give you the final here on San Francisco, Kevin. Steve Young and company with a 38 to 19 win. This ice did the touchdown pass to Owens. 49ers will host Green Bay next Sunday in the wild card game. And we'll have next Sunday Jacksonville and New England. Let's go back to you. Owens has become the dominant receiver now over Rice with San Francisco. He's the uh, become a dominant receiver, but I'll tell you the dominant guy on that field is Steve Young. He puts the ball right in the hands of those good, good young receivers and makes them look even better than they are. Well, the Broncos are going to win it 
They'll go 8 0 in the AFC West. And their centerpiece, Terrell Davis and John Elway, with big history making days today. Four Elway touchdown passes, 300 for his career. Only three others, or only two others have done that. Tarkington and Marino. And then Terrell Davis joins a group which includes O.J. Simpson, Eric Dickerson, and Barry Sanders. He becomes the fourth to gain 2,000 yards in one season. Let me put a postscript to that. They're walking away from this game healthy. They didn't have a major injury in the ball game going into this playoffs. They get a week off. Mike Shanahan told me yesterday he's going to give them a couple of days off. They'll come back Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, take the weekend off, and then a normal week in two weeks getting ready for that first playoff game. They've got the bye while everybody else works. Are the Broncos back on track? They needed this win. I think they have regained the edge. They're back on track. They're now the number one team in the AFC. They win their 14th game of the season. That is an all-time Denver record. And the defending Super Bowl champion coach Mike Shanahan takes his team to the playoffs beginning January 9th here as they get a bye week one. And you wonder about Dennis Erickson. What's going through his mind? Will he lasts with this team and be back next year. Well, it's the nature of the game. If you don't win enough ball games, even if you're a good coach, things do happen. But a big win for Denver today. Wild card next week on CBS. We'll put the New England Patriots against Jacksonville. Coverage begins with Jim Nance, Marcus Allen, Mike Lombardi, and Brent Jones from New York at 12 Eastern time and at 12 30. It's Greg Gumbel and Phil Sims from Altel Stadium in Jacksonville. Mark Brunel, I heard a comment this morning, says he may be ready to quarterback the Jaguars come the playoffs beginning next week. If they don't wrap him up and put him on crutches, he'll play because he's that kind of a player. And Jacksonville is such a tough place to play. Terrific home field advantage for the Jacksonville Jaguars going into that one. We'll be back. Elway with the four touchdown passes. The Broncos finish 14-2. News 4, the spirit of Colorado. This is News 4 at 5. A history-making day for the Denver Broncos. Terrell Davis ran his way into the record books. He's now only the fourth running back ever to top 2,000 yards in a season. And John Elway reached his own milestone. This TD pass to Shannon Sharp makes him only the third quarterback in NFL history to throw 300 touchdowns. Numbers 7 and TD and, and TD led the Broncos to a franchise record 14th regular season win today at Mile High Stadium. And it looks like the Denver Broncos have gotten their edge back just in time. Next stop, the playoffs. The final score today, Seattle 21 and Denver 28. Right now, let's go to Terrell Davis. Hear what he has to say. Oh, that's that was one of the goals that I had all, all along was try to break uh, the Broncos, you know, rushing record. And I didn't think it was going to come this year, but uh, I'm happy about that. And that just, uh, you know, hopefully we can keep going for more. Were you, McGuire said he was not aware of the flash bulbs. Were you? The flash bulbs? In the stands? Oh, no, I didn't, I, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I don't know what happened. I was on the sideline on my back, so I don't know what happened. <laughs> Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. It's, it's an elite group, and it's a special club to be in, and I'm just I'm just happy that I'm, I'm finally in there now. I mean, that was one thing that uh, you know, people said that, you know, Barry Sanders had 2,000 yards, and I just wanted to get in this group, and now, you know, no one can ever take that away from me. Did your linemen threaten to do something to you if you didn't get to <laughs> No, they didn't threaten me, but, you know, you could just see it in their eyes. They wanted it, they wanted it bad, and they went out there, and they, they wanted it so bad, and, I mean, they were blocking and doing the extra, thing, extra things that it take to get it back over 2,000 yards. And it was just up to me to go out there and run hard. Terrell, was, it, was Neil Smith the one who gave you the ball? Was it Neil? I don't know who took the ball from me. Yeah, was it Neil? Yeah. I don't know. I got mobbed. I don't know who took the ball from me. Like I said, I was on my back. I don't know what happened. Did you know how many yards you needed on that last carry? I did. Yeah, I did. I was aware of that. That's why I just tried. I tried to get the <laughs> It was wild, man. <laughs> Two more questions, guys. Okay, no. Thanks. 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 That's the first. Yeah. <laughs>
All right, very, yeah, very happy, it. Terrell Davis. And Vic is here now. Looks like the Broncos are really playing like they did at the beginning of the season. They needed that extra boost of confidence going into the playoffs, that friendly reminder that they are a great team, and right. they got it today by beating Seattle and breaking some history there. It's obvious now the Broncos lacked motivation the last couple of weeks. They had all the motivation they needed today. The goal was to get Terrell Davis his 2,000 yards. And, of course, winning the game wouldn't hurt either. Let's take it to Mile High Stadium. Home sweet home, huh? Very first series for the Broncos. We've got trouble. Nobody's open. Elway scrambling. Elway ransacked by a pair of Seahawks. And they had to settle for a 42-yard field goal. But looky here. That 42-yarder no longer automatic. Jason Elam is wide left. He's in a slump. That's his second straight miss. Here come the Hawks. Uh, they mount a 68-yard drive, and they give it to Ricky Waters. Tricky Ricky bouncing to the outside and diving into the end zone. It's a 7-0 Seattle lead at the end of one quarter of play. Second quarter, the Broncos are on the move. Elway hits Terrell Davis. And you know, TD, he's hungry with that pigskin. Look at him go. He wants more running over people. Uh-oh, uh that's a fumble. His second fumble in two years. And then they come right back. The Broncos from their own 33. Elway on the money to Rod Smith. Touchdown. They're finally on the board. It's a 7-7 ball game. Seattle quarterback John Kitna wears number seven because he grew up idolizing John Elway. But on this play, Kitna's on his keister. Compliments of Alfred Williams. That brings the offense to life. Third and eight. Seahawks bring the blitz. Elway brings the pain. Shannon Sharp. Great read. Great play. 14-7. Broncos lead it. And then they get it back. One last attempt before the half. 53-yarder, looks good, feels good, boink. That's no good. He's now missed three in a row, Jason Elam. The Broncos go to the locker room with a seven-point lead, 14-7. Second stanza, it's time to get TD his yards. This three-yarder made him the all-time leading rusher in Bronco history, surpassing the great Floyd Little. Three plays later, Fake the handoff to TD, just throw it to TD. That's his 23rd touchdown of the season. And watch this, forget the mile high salute, he's doing the bucking Bronco. 21-7 Broncos at the end of three. Fourth quarter, it is fourth and goal for the Bronx. Of course they're gonna go for it. Play action, Elway, Sharp, please. 28 to seven, Sharp is so happy he gives the horsey a smooch, yeah, hi. Right. All right, now a little piece of business remaining. That's getting TD his yards. He needed to finish with 170. That run got him to 160. Then, more history. He needed seven yards. He got 14 of them. Only the fourth running back ever to gain 2,000 yards in a season. He finished with 2007. Seahawks added a pair of late touchdowns to make it respectable, and they ruined the spread, of course. 28-21 the final. The Broncos finish the season. 14 and 2, best record in franchise history. Let's take you right back out to Mile High Stadium. Les Shapiro in the Bronco locker room. Les? Hi, Vic. Rod Smith holding court. Let's hear what he has to say. Rod, does this give people a little, uh, can they breathe a sigh of relief? People talked about how the Broncos were not playing well, but now you guys are on.